Gabriella and the Advice Show. Well, what's going on, everyone? It's time for the show. I am extremely, extremely anxious for this show. Now, you know why I'm anxious for this show is because they had a lot of people on that YouTube really talking jazzy um, in the past few days about some of our topics, comments um, about subjects that we have presented. Now, tonight's show, for those who do not know the topic, is going to be why playing the victim is counterproductive to progress. Now, as always, we will let Ms. Gabriella say how she feel about the situation. Then I will come in, and then after that, we will accept your calls. If you would like to speak, it's 347-996-3350, and make sure you press the number one. All right, Ms. Gabriella, it's your time. What you think about it? Why playing the victim is counterproductive to progress, Ms. Gabriella? Mm, I think that playing the victim is counterproductive to progress because maybe it's just the way that I was raised and maybe a little, the way a lot of old school people were raised, but we were raised to say that if I do something and something bad happens, no matter what decision I make or whatever I do in my life, if I made that choice and something bad comes out of it, I have to live with it. Let's say, for example, if I was to go out and go sleep with everybody in the neighborhood and I ended up pregnant, I'm not going to sit there and blame the man and say, oh, the man, he should have stand, he should have stood by me and he should be there for me and this, that, and the third. Or if I was poor and, um, and there was a situation where, you know, someone came up to me and said, hey, you know, you can make a, I don't know if you've seen that show Locked Up Abroad where people will come up to you uh, from out of the country and say, hey, you know, you want to make $10,000 in a weekend, just come with me. And all you got to do is just drop this package off and then come back and you'll be fine. I'm not going to do stuff like that. There's, I mean, yes, money is nice, but I'm not going to sit there and risk being in some international prison for 10 years because I want to make, you know, because I want the $10,000 in a weekend. Or, I mean, anything. There is, there are situations that can happen anytime, anywhere. But I feel like at the end of the day, everything that you do is personal responsibility. And I don't care if, you know... Yes, things things are a little bit harder for us black Americans. I'm not going to say this not. Racism does exist. We are not in a post-racial society, and we will never be in a post-racial society. Because when you put different groups of people that don't look like each other together, there's always going to be some type of friction. It happens. That's just how people are. And I knew that coming into this world, I am black and I'm a woman. Those are two things. That's almost like being born with two strikes against you. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm not saying that, oh, oh woe is me. I just know that I have to work probably about three, four times harder than any other woman because things aren't just going to be handed to me like that. That's just the way that things are. But I'm not going to sit there and say that because uh, the odds are kind of stacked against me that I'm, not, I'm just going to fail. No. I'm not going to fail and, and get on the system and have a bunch of kids and and be living on welfare and then sit there and say, oh, it's, it's the white man. It's the white man's fault. No. This is all personal responsibility. I know that... <laughs> Just like I said, I know that coming into this world, things going to be hard. So you've got to work hard. Point blank, period. And if you want to say that I'm a coon and a house negro and a handkerchief head and whatever else you want to call me, then I'll be a coon. If I, <laughs> if, if that's what, if, if being, if having personal responsibility and working hard and realizing that crime is not the, the answer and is being a coon, then fine. That's what I am. Ms. Gabriella? Mm -hmm. I guess you are coon. All right. Let me start picking up where you left off about that. You know, I have done plenty of videos. I mean, I have went hard in the paint to expose the hypocrisy within the media, how they make a difference with black people in their reporting, how they don't show everybody doing wrong. They only show certain groups doing certain things and they want to cover others. Now, when I'm pointing out those racists as getting away with stuff or pointing out that, hey, we all the same, don't act like you're just so different and you're so much better. Oh, you're applauding those videos. I'm talking about some, some black folks. You're applauding those videos. And the moment I said, okay, let's go ahead and start talking about the deep rooted issues within the black community. Let's talk about what's really is the thing that's holding black people back 
from really making progress to become better, to fix our situation. All of a sudden, when you start putting uh, this in people's face, all of a sudden when, yeah, you know, I mean, you down for the people and you, I mean, you're a good brother and you all this stuff that you were saying. Now, all of a sudden, you know, we, because Ms. Gabrielle included, I am a coon and she's a coonette. This is what you have labeled us because we said that we do not blame a hundred percent what thugs do to innocent, innocent people on racism, white supremacy, etc. I posted what two videos yesterday of one little girl who was going to sell Girl Scout cookies and she was shot by a thug. I posted another video of a barber working hard for his family and another barber was killed several people were wounded by thugs and you still try to give excuse you still try to give cover to the thugs you say that we are victims and all this other stuff i don't play the victim i understand racism exists i come from an area where it's highly racist when i went to school the black people sat on one side of the cafeteria mm -hmm. and the white folks sat on the other side of the cafeteria and the two did not cross. The only time it crossed is when somebody from the other side was dating uh, somebody from the other side. That's usually how it goes. And half the time, it would be the white people that would come over to the black side when this happened. Nobody said that we were segregated, but that's the way it was done. I ain't remember in our school, they even had, uh, at one point in time, it even got bad, like race fights in my school. OK, so I understand all about racism. A hundred percent. I understand as a black male, I'm going to have it harder. I'm profiled because I'm a black man, especially a dark skinned black male. I know I'm going to deal with colorism within my own community. I was ridiculed a lot from within my community due to colorism and things like that. But after all that, it does not give me the excuse to play the victim and in take victimization to say, I cannot make something for myself because I'm black. I can't make something of myself because I grew up poor. I can't make something of myself because I just did get the uh, proper lot in life. I'm sorry, that just did not work. And any person I know have done that, it holds them back. They can't progress nowhere. I have a family member who has been in a perpetual victimization of themselves for years. I've talked to them over and over and over again, and yet they still will not get out of the victimization that they're in inside their mind. And it's so tough to talk to somebody who feel they are a victim to something. And you see that, look, all you have to do is just do this and you'll be OK. And they will not do it because they view themselves in a, as a victim. Somebody needs to help me. Somebody feels sorry for me. And when you're in that state, you can't progress to bigger and better things. I understand some of the things that we deal with, especially as black people in this country. It's not easy. I understand about stereotype. I understand uh, about the looks. I understand how we can be first uh, fire and, and last hire. I don't think I understand this stuff 100%. And you can look through my video library and see how much I understand it and see I have posted these stories time and time and time again. But at the end of the day, racism is going to exist due to the fact that is a sin of the heart. As long as people are teaching small children to hate people of the different races, then you're going to have racism. And what government entity could really govern the issues of the heart? So that is the problem. But when it comes to us or even in your personal life, you can't take uh, the role of playing the victim and expect to progress. All of us been through some stuff that's traumatizing. You can uh -huh. go through a bad uh, relationship. I went through a marriage. I worked my best in that marriage. I worked hard. I got. I bought a home uh, in, in a decent place. You know, I paid cars off. There's all this stuff, and it still failed. I did everything right, and the wrong thing happened. I could have lived in that victimization stage that I was in just for a short time, feeling sorry for myself. I could have had the victimization in my mind about how women are and how women could be. 
But I learned and said to myself, I'm sorry. Life has to continue. I have to get over it. I have to stop feeling sorry for myself and move on. And if I would not have done that, we wouldn't even have this conversation because I was nowhere near the point I'm at now, even with what I do online. What I speak is something that I had to live. Some of you get upset when you say, uh, well, when you hear, I'm sorry, certain things being said and you say, well, they are racist talking points. It's a difference between when I say it and when a racist say it. When a racist is telling it to you, they using probably uh, some sort of fact with it, but they, there's the spirit behind it. And the spirit is shut up, Negro. Uh, because we don't want to hear what you got to say because we don't want you talking about the racism that we do to you. When I say it, I'm using a fact also because I care about you and I do not want you to continue in the progress that you are doing right now, which is about much or nothing. A lot of things that we do in the black community is complete insane, insanity. And most people know insanity is doing the same thing, expecting a different result. And unfortunately, in the black community, we constantly circling that hamster wheel all day, thinking we're going to get somewhere by doing that. It's a lot of insanity going on in the community and playing victim and saying all the time white supremacy and racism and all this other stuff. It's not going to help you build that economic base that you crave so much. Playing the victim and saying something about white supremacy and racism 24-7 is not going to bring us into a greater error. It's not going to do that. We have to say, okay, we know this exists and we'll deal with that. But let's go on and just look at uh, what we got going on and build that in spite of. Because there's too many people within the history of black Americans who've moved past the people who's act as I stated before, people who's actually slaves. They were slaves. And yet they still went on to do great things, build schools, got highly educated, uh, did inventions, uh, did all kinds of special things within the military, all things that people who were actual slaves. Any people went through the Jim Crow era, all the uh, civil rights struggle, and he still did something great. So this is the thing. We can't play the victim no longer. This is not about enough. Some of you saying he's playing to his white uh, fan base. You're stupid. I put my videos out there for what they are. And I believe in what's right. And I'm against what's wrong. And on that notion, I can care less what color you are. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. And the reason why some black people will never make it. And I say some, not all. Is because you want to think that you are a victim 24 7. And there are people who are race pimping to you and always gonna feed you that and manipulate you and to make you feel that you know you're just so downtrodden when you are the some of the most courageous people on the earth. We if we I tell people if we survive slavery, then why do you think we can't get past this stuff? We don't even have the man on our neck like we used to. You know what I'm saying? At one point in time, the Ku Klux Klan would show up at any moment to bomb a church, bomb a house, drag a, a black man out on the middle of the lawn, beat him up, hang him, burn the crosses, all this stuff. We don't even live that anymore. But yet we still want to give excuse. We have things constantly going down within our community. We only have now 19 banks, uh, black owned banks now. Uh, they call, blank, black banks are closing. Uh, media companies for black uh, people are at an all time low, according to the FCC. Are we going to constantly keep blaming racism? See, we get upset and we don't see programming uh, that shows what we like things uh, to be. But yet we're not trying to get involved with those aspects. That's why I try to support many people within the media format, uh, like the brother you've seen on the video, uh, Steve Williams, you know, he's brother from Houston. And, uh, you know, I like what he got going on, me and him, you know, working together on some things because I want to help other brothers grow um, their formats uh, in the media realm. If At least if I can believe in you like that. So, you know, I definitely push more and more African-Americans to get involved in the media sag. We, we not all rappers and we not all just a doggone entertainer. I mean, we can do a bunch of stuff outside of what's the norm for black people. But we cannot do this constantly feeling sorry for ourselves and saying that we are a victim. And even if you're not black and you may 
be victimizing yourself based on, you know, I had poor parents. They didn't do much for me. They treated me like crap. I was abused. I was molested. I was raped. Um, unfortunately, that's some horrible things a lot of people have dealt with in this country. But at the end of the day, you have to get past it, whether it's through prayer, counseling, both, or whatever you have to do to get past it, because you cannot live your life as a perpetual victim. And when you do things, you cannot say if you're an alcoholic, well, my grandfather's an alcoholic and well, my great grandfather and my mama and all these other people. When you uh, get stopped by the police for DUI, you mm -hmm. can't do that. You're responsible for what you do. And you cannot say because of them and how you grew up, uh, you know, you shifted away from what you have done. I know it had an effect on you. Don't get me wrong. It has. But you can't live that for the rest of your life. So if you choose to play the victim, don't get mad at other people who will move on and progress wherever the part they are in their life. Because many people have some horrible stories in their life, but yet they've moved past it. So I'm going to go ahead and start accepting callers. Um, if anybody have an issue with what I said in some of the videos related to playing the victim, you can definitely call me. We'll talk about it. Um, you can message me on Facebook. I'll be checking during the show or whatever. And, and I want to know if you got a problem with us, make sure you press the one button. So I know that you want to talk because, um, you know, if you don't press the one button. I just feel that you're listening. So I'm going to go to the first caller. Ms. Gabrielle, you ready? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. This per And this person was very, very faithful at that. Erico 513-442, you on the show. Hello, you on the show? What's your name? Durant. Okay, what's on your mind about the topic? Oh yeah, um, uh, uh, yeah, um, yeah. I just I uh, wanted to say um, you were right uh, about about many things what you just said. Um, many people. I victimize because uh, of what people are telling us, bringing us down. But I think we need to be more strong and 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 not pay attention to what other people say. Mm -hmm. you no, know, in life, yeah, that's that's basically. Unfortunately, in life, it's the survival of the fittest. I mean, if you are a person who think you're going to get through life being very weak minded and weak hearted, this world's going to run over you so much because it's worse today because people don't care about nobody else. Mm -hmm. That's why. So if you don't have no courage, you better learn it or get around some people who's, who's strong and learn from them. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's basically what I was, um, what I was. Uh, fuck me. What happened? <laughs> you didn't hear what he said. No, I didn't hear what he, he said. He was trolling. Don't worry about it. Okay, I know what he said. Well, like I say, all this stuff is recorded, so you guys will see it on the live stream or YouTube or whatever. Um, it is what it is. Like I said, if you if you troll, that's fine. You know what I'm saying? But uh, call you on the show. Hello, speak up. Hey, hey, I don't even know y'all. We don't even know y'all. We need to. <laughs> okay, I had to cut that off. Trolling again, Ms. Gabriel. What's going, mm -hmm. on with, what's going on with the trolling tonight? Erico 404, you on the show. Hey, how you doing today? How you doing? What's your name? Oh, my name is Timmy. Um, and I just wanted to uh, also say a really like topic and... I just have to say this too, too, you know. And also, I like how you, uh, I like how you expose, I like how you expose the, uh, talk to, you know, talk to the, um, other, other black people about the actions when they say black power, you know, about that. All right, what's your opinion? By the way. Okay, what's your opinion about the topic? Uh, my thing about the topic is, uh, you can, uh, 
my thing about the topic is um, all you got to do is um, work hard, get past the uh, petty junk, you know? Um, life, all I got to say is life sucks. That, that's all. Life sucks. It sucks. Sucks for who? And uh, for everybody. It no, it don't suck, either. No, it don't either. You speak to. for yourself. No, it don't either. Uh-huh. Life what you make of it. I mean, uh-huh. do, you, do, you, do you feel your life suck? No, 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 no. Okay, um, well, you made a general no, no, statement, no, no, no. so that's, a, that's why I'm just trying to respond yeah, to I'm making it. Yeah, a general, uh, a general, uh, you know, a comic, general comic. Um, but, but it's up to you. It's up to you to work, work hard and, uh, to stop making excuses for you. And I can't say how many people just make excuses for themselves. Oh, uh, oh, my daddy was in jail, so he didn't take care of me. Oh, I'm this. Oh, I'm that. Always the excuses. You know what? I have a disability and black and black and and just as dark skin as you two. And, and I'm almost um, done with college. Mm-hmm. Almost graduated this year. So. Well, that's good. And got, and got So my thing is, my thing is, if people would just stop making excuses, it would be a, yeah, it would be a, a lot better for them. You know? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you 100%. Well, appreciate you calling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. I had to come off, Ms. Gabriella. Ms. Gabriella, got anything to say before we take the next caller? <laughs> no, let's go to the next one. Let's see what they have to say. Yeah, we're we trying to see here. I be wanting people to call. There's always got something to say, though. Uh, caller 315-561, you on the show. Um, hello? How you doing? I'm good. I, the one from Facebook, message you. Okay, or is your name Kim? Yeah. Oh, hey, Kim, how you doing? Good. Um, I just wanted to say, like, just two quick things about the topic. One okay. is that, like, within the black community, mm-hmm. I believe that people often are just like wishing and hoping for things to change instead of actually working towards progress. And that's one thing that really hurts our community. And I, I'm Christian, and I'm not trying to get on anybody who, I guess, religious, but a lot of times people are also praying for things, and they're not working, and they feel like God's just going to like drop down something from I don't know where and like help <laughs> instead of like wanting to actually help themselves. And so that's like really hurts the black community because we're always in church and we're always like praying for things and we're told to just wait, be patient, and things will happen instead of to like work hard, I feel like. And the other thing is like a lot of, well, some black people don't like to get out of their comfort zone. Oh, oh, oh now you get a nerve. Oh, no, they don't. You get a nerve. And yeah, like, you did. But it's true. Tell, don't, I'm not going to say it's not true. Oh, that's what white people do. Like, do I go, <laughs> like, the school I go to is 80% white, and, like, my major, because I'm, like, an art major, is basically, it's like, me and five other black people. So, of course, mm-hmm. like, I deal with, even though they're nice people, they're also narrow-minded, like, at times. So, a lot of times, I'll have black people say, why are you an art major? You're not going to make money doing that. Or, like, whenever you pick something that, I guess, different, and how, and how do they know? See, 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 Kim, this is what I want to know. How do they know? Did they come to you with some sort of research and say, listen, I looked at the median income and it says in this area, you're going to make X amount of dollars. So you're not going to make much money. They don't come with no facts to back up any of those claims. But if you want to be a twerker or a stripper, oh, they'll love you for that. Yeah, like you kind of get shunned a little bit if you're not like doing something you know that's good you know what kim kim it's actually good if they shun you because those ignorant people within our community that shun you that's usually the ones that don't go nowhere i really would want to be accepted by them 
Because usually you're going to have to be accepted by them and you have to do some old ratchet stuff to get mm-hmm. there. And see, Kim, what you got going on, you're establishing yourself um, and you'll probably get a husband before those females are probably telling you that stuff or even get a husband. They're probably complaining and hating on you. Why she got somebody and I ain't got nobody. Yeah, I look better than her. You know how they are. They always got something to say, but they don't have they have nothing going on in, with themselves. They be like, because I mean, there's there's always going to be people that will try to tear you down and say, oh, what you're doing is not important. You'll never make any money doing that. But then when you look at what they're doing, they're not. I mean, they're 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 going to enter a market that's so saturated that they'll probably never be able to find work themselves. Because they just want to be in that comfort zone. So don't worry about it. Yeah, well, that's all I have to say. <laughs> oh, that's all good. I mean, shoot, you know, continue to do what what you do. Forget them kind of people. Keep keep them kind of people out your life. You know what I'm saying? I believe you, I believe in surrounding myself with like minded people because mm-hmm. I mean, you got so much stuff going on. You really don't need to surround yourself with people from the outside trying to tear you down. Because shoot, you got to fight your own self for tearing you down half the time. The best part about that. Is that it's often it is like it can be your family or people. That oh, they the biggest culprits. Can't really. <laughs> your greatest enemy gonna be put the people as closest to you at times. Because mm-hmm. you know it's like this, and, and, and this is something I've experienced too. When you don't have nothing, everybody your friend. When you slowly start climbing up, you start you know maybe get a, a, a good job or a business or you got your degree and you and you seeing the fruits of that. Um, the same people that loved you when you was rubbing two nickels together, all of a sudden can't stand you now because you doing it and you worked hard to get to that point. You suffered. You didn't go to the movies. You didn't go on lavish shopping sprees. You didn't go buy that Louis bag or any of that stuff. You ain't done none of that. But all of a sudden now you can do it based on your hard work. You didn't steal from nobody. You wasn't a welfare queen or section eight diva. You were none of that. You did it from hard work and determination. And now they hating on you now. For what? Because you worked hard? Yeah, that's why, like, I mean, the two main things, like working hard, you just, like, expect it to change on its own. Now, now Kim, let me ask you a question. I, I'm, I'm curious. I'm real curious. Um, did, you grow yeah. up, did you grow up with your dad? Yeah, my parents have been oh, see, married for, like, I knew it. See, I, yeah, that's why. <laughs> I, I, I knew <laughs> it. I knew it because he'll say, "Wait, listen to how she's talking." I say, "That's why I had to ask that question." It, see, it, it does make a difference if you. And, and I'm actually about your dad. What was he? He was he a very involved uh, father? I mean, very loving. You know, you know, anytime uh, he he's there for you. Uh, yeah, we talk like every week and like text each other in the morning and at night. So. And so, yeah. uh, so. When you, when some of the stuff you saw growing up, you know, because I'm just curious uh, about your dad, and I mean, did he show you what a man's supposed to be? Um, yeah, both of my parents, like, they both work hard. Mm-hmm. And, like, my dad's always been, like, protective, so he, like, they actually sit down and talk to us about stuff. Yeah, see, and, and this, and this, you know, I've told this to a lot of guys. I'm sorry, but I have said this. I said, if you can get a woman who have you know, came from, uh, if you can, a two-parent household. I'm not saying women that come from single-parent households are horrible. I'm not saying that. But I notice, you know, it's just like by listening to you talk, I noticed that you, you maybe had your dad around or a great relationship with him. I mean, because you, you can grow up in a single-parent household and your dad still can be the greatest ever being there for you all the time. So I don't want to say that. But, you know, when I notice ladies who have a dad in their life, they just have a different approach to life. You know, and, and, you know, it definitely when you get to that point, you decide to get in a relationship and get married, you're going to kind of know, you know, things on a level that those who didn't have their dad around to show them the right way about how men are supposed to be. Because maybe you could pick better. And I think that's one of the horrible things about, like, not having your dad around. You pick guys based on the wrong things. So, you know, and then your dad around, he going to look out for you. You know, you bring the guy to your dad. And then, you know, I know you're going to want his opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's a good thing. So, it sounds like you got a lot going good for you, Kim. So, shoot, just just stay encouraged and, uh, you know, keep doing what you're doing. And, you know, get your get your education and your artwork. And, shoot, share with me some of your artwork. If you got some, I'd like to see it. Yeah, 
<laughs> sure. Okay. Thank oh. you. Okay, Kim. Well, you have a good good night. You too. All righty. See, Miss Gabriella, you know when you you know part of having your father in your life, he would teach you not to play the victim. Mm-hmm. Because he would keep you to man up, a woman up, because you got to deal with this world however how it is. You know what I'm saying? And yes, what you were saying earlier, being a woman is a little harder in this country than it is for men at times. I'm going to say at times, not 100%. Well, I know, I mean, all over the world. <laughs> but, I mean, we actually have it a lot easier than a lot of women. Yeah. Internet. We do. That's why I say that. We, we have good compared to what everybody else has. Well, it's a, it's a kind of like when it comes to men and women in this country, you have that yin and yang effect. What I mean by that is, like, one instance, it's hard to be a woman in the financial realm. Like, women aren't paid the same as men. But in another sense, women have superiority that men don't have. Like you could, uh, like say with the baby situation, with accusations, with women can get away with so much in this country, and it's just crazy. And then with men, yes, men got the income, but men, you know, don't get benefit of doubt when it comes to you know accusations of rape, uh, molestation, the situation with the children. He has no rights over that. You know, child support courts. He has to get a legal team just to defend himself. So it's it goes b- both ways, you know, on on that with men and women in this country. But you know, playing a victim is just something that we cannot do if we want to progress. So uh, let me see if I can go to the next caller here. Erico code five eight five four seven two. You on the show? Hello. Yes. How you doing? I'm doing good. Yourself. Do what? Are you doing he's, good yourself? What's his name, Gabriella? He said I'm doing. He was. He was saying that he's doing well, and he was asking how you are. Oh, I'm sorry. I can hardly hear you. I'm doing good. What's your opinion on the topic? Or do you have an issue with anything uh, I said yeah, recently? To... No, no. I'm I'm completely on board with you. Uh, I agree. I've been watching your show for maybe two years now, mm-hmm. and I agree with most of the stuff you're saying, especially on this topic, I, I used to have an the victim, I'm 14, and I have something called OCD, and... I know what that you know, is. It makes me worry about... What? I, was, I know what OCD is. <laughs> oh, you do? Yeah, it's obsessive compulsive disorder, that's what you're talking about? Yep. Oh my god, that thing is a pain. <laughs> I'll tell you. But I used to play the victim, because of that, I used to feel that I was you know, people owed me something because I had more of a struggle than them and that, you know, I was, I felt entitled to certain things because I had that disorder. And now that I'm a little older, I'm not too much older, but, because I'm only 14, uh, but I realized that playing the victim doesn't really get you anywhere in life. Uh, I've, like, after I saw your videos, I kind of, like, I started, my maturity spurt started my like I started to become more of a leader in my classes with uh, everyone you know I helped everyone out a little bit more I used to bully people because I was bullied and I stopped that uh, years uh, ago now mm-hmm. and I it just like when I was in that period and I look back at that state that I was in you know I, I I really did see not much progress. And now that I look at myself, you know, now and the things I've accomplished since then, I feel that, you know, I've accomplished so much more and that it's just, it's just useless to kind of play the victim because if you play the victim, all you're doing is you're just crying and you're not getting anything done, you know? It just, you just don't get anything done, you know? Well, yeah, when you play the victim, you literally stop in life. That's no different than... You know, you're driving your car and you just go to stop, put it in park and you can rev up the engine all day long. But until you put it in drive, that's on time that car is going to move. And that's when you play in the victim, you you put it in park, but you're constantly revving the engine up constantly because people see you complaining. People see you uh, feeling sorry for yourself and everything, but you're not going anywhere. And unfortunately, I have people that stay in that car for the rest of their life until they get old and great and some of them die still <laughs> believing they, you know, people need to feel sorry for them. And at times people will feel sorry yeah. for you, but people, people, you actually will inspire more people when you say, you know what? I was this, I did do this, 
but I moved past it and done this. That makes a great story. Shoot, that makes great movies for people to watch to show how a person's overcome something yes. that a lot of people don't. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I, like, I have a couple friends that I used to, like, now I don't hang out with them because they were kind of counterproductive to, to themselves mm -hmm. and to me, and I don't mean to sound selfish when I say that, but they just, you know, mm -hmm. they were... Me and my friends back and when I was maybe nine, we used to call it. We were like more like kind of like juvenile delinquents. Not necessarily like bugging fights, but just like messing around and stuff. Like a little disorderly, you know, not not uh, like hurting people or anything, but like, you know, like uh, keeping people's houses, <clears throat> egging people's houses, stuff like that. And now that I look back on that, and, and they still do that sometimes, and I just, I'm like... Boy, y'all taking a risk doing that stuff these days. <laughs> y'all taking a risk doing stuff like these days. People these days, they have no problem pulling that pistol. So you take, well, you take nope. definitely they risk. Yeah, back, back in the day, in New York, <laughs> back back in the day. Oh, you yeah. said New York. Oh, if you're in New York, yeah, well, you yeah you got a little bit more of a chance because you can't yeah. really have a gun over there. But I, you know, back in the day, they used to pull yeah. that belt off and whip you with the belt. Now they not even bullets at you. You know, so <laughs> the size here yeah. definitely changed. There's the thing that I think about living in New York. It's like because we can't own that many guns. It's like it's like limited to very very little. So like I'm not. Like, huge gun fanatic. I'm not insane, but it's just ridiculous. And not only like, people can't protect themselves against, you know, like thugs and you know, stuff like that. And it's, mm -hmm. just, it's just terrible. And now he's taking away education money, but yeah, it's a, that's a different topic. Yeah, I hear yeah. you. But, uh, man, I appreciate you calling the show. I'll move on to the next caller. Yeah, all right. Thanks for your uh, videos and keep doing the good work. All right, man. Thank you for watching. See, it is, you know, ladies and gentlemen, that is a compliment to what we got going on here. That young man say he started watching the show and he said that he has learned to be more mature. He's not bullying people no more. He's just progressing his life. So I mm -hmm. like to hear stuff like that, you know, especially from younger people, because, you know, it may not be much or nothing to you what I'm doing, but if it's affect at least one person that way or a few people, then that's good. Cause you know what, in this day and time, and I had a person tell me this on Facebook. I didn't realize that they say people on YouTube is almost like the new Hollywood. Like nobody watches, go to church and listen to the preachers no more. They were telling me, I say people rather watch YouTube now. I mean, and I was doing some research on that. Some of these people from YouTube are just as big or, bigger than some of these pe folks in Hollywood. Now, I'm not saying I'm not. I'm on the Chitlin circuit. Just want to make sure you, I put that out there. I'm on the Chitlin circuit of YouTube. I'm on the Chitlin circuit of everything. So no matter how high I go, in my mind, I'm on the Chitlin circuit. And you're only good as your last video, period, no matter what those numbers say. So let me go ahead and go to the next call. Erico360, you're on the show. Hello, I'm on? Hello, how you doing? Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you yes. just fine. Hello. Hello, I can, can hear you hear just me? fine. I hear you. How if you hear me? <laughs> oh, yes, I hear you. All yeah. right. I agree. I've been uh, I just subscribed to your show about a year ago. Okay. And I agree with you one hundred percent about people feeling sorry for themselves. I am so tired. To me they're a bunch of whiny babies. Mm-hmm. They're always sitting up there feeling sorry for themselves. Well, let, me, let me ask you everybody a question. Everybody has to do what they have to do. Well let me ask sure. you. Question, do you know anybody in your personal life who's like that? Yes, my ex-boyfriend, unfortunately. Yes, he was like, a, oh, he couldn't get a job because of this. He couldn't do this because of this. I got tired of that nonsense. I said, look, I work two jobs to do what I have to do. Mm -hmm. Everyone has to do the same. <laughs> my ex-boyfriend was the same way. He whined about everything. Why he couldn't do this. And his family, no offense, but they were a bunch of welfare queens, I call them. Mm-hmm. And all he wanted to do was sit up there and live off of me. And then when I tried, because I'm in the venture of, um, I work in the healthcare industry, and I'm trying to write a book. You know, it was just a lot of negative stuff he used to say, you know? 
Oh, yeah. And I'm See, like, I don't need this. I don't need this. Exactly. And you shouldn't have nobody around you like that. See, the thing is, when you're the type of person, you got stuff going on, you're trying to make some of yourself. People like that, you, your tolerance level is going to be very low for them. Because... Um, I'm like you. I'm for the progressive blacks. That's how mm -hmm. I am, yeah? Yeah. One hundred percent. I'm all for the progressive uh, 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 black people for sure. I don't have time to deal with those who want to cover for thugs and uh, oh lord, is that the kids? Is that the kids? Hello? Yeah, hello. Is that the kids? I could. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Huh? Is that the kids? Because I'm hearing like play? yeah, I hear the kids back there. My goddaughter. Okay. That's my goddaughter. Oh, okay. okay. All right. I kind of heard us. Okay. What's, what's going on? What, 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 they, what are they doing? Playing back there? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's the tell, tell them, tell them uh, the sponge, is SpongeBob on? <laughs> tell them I have any kids. <laughs> yeah, but uh, anyway, you know, people you like, 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 you know, jokes that people like that, um, you know, I can't be around people like that, uh, <laughs> period. I like people that got something going. Exactly. Okay, she crying. Well, I, like I said, is that how you talked about the other day when you talked about these thugs and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. I agree with you about that one. A lot of people like to, uh, thug sympathize, sympathizers is what I call them, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and they say, and they say, and did you read some of them comments? Did you read some of the comments saying that me and Miss Gabriella are coons? Are you serious? Are you yeah, serious? they said. Well, they said they said they said they very stupid and ignorant. I got a video. Why would I want somebody shooting up my neighborhood? Yeah, selling but drugs and everything yeah. else. Yeah, but but we are cool exactly. for saying you that. Can't, you can't go to the store in peace without without the men hanging out there. You can't go. You know, say you want to just, go, you know, go anywhere. You can't go there because you're afraid to go in the corner. Because there are certain neighborhoods, okay, I, don't, I can't go into. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you bring that point up, then the first thing they're going to say, well, they're conditioned to be that way. Well, no, it's white no, supremacy. No, no, it, well, it's no, racism. It, it, everybody like, makes choices. I'll say, I'm sorry. No, the hell it isn't. It's personal choices to do those things. Exactly. I agree with you 100%. It's personal responsibility. And I'm going to say this. I am an African-American woman. I'm proud of it. But guess what? One thing I hate to deal with is just these ignorant niggas. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to deal with them. Oh, boy. You know, you know. unfortunately, that, like, that uh, sometimes... I mean, that, like sometimes I want to go on a tirade fun. with that at times, but I try to not to do that as much because I know that not just black people are listening and I don't want them to say, well, why are you saying that all the time? And we say it, we, we all get mad, you know? So, oh, come on. Yeah. You know, well, I, I try, I try <laughs> not to, but you I, know I, well, are. I'm a firm believer of don't do something. And then you tell somebody else not to do it. If you feel it's offensive. I you know, agree with you so that's why I try not to use that word a bunch in my commentary. Now, at times, I may just have to say it because that's just the best way to describe something. But if I can't, I try not to. But hey, I understand your point of view, you know, and how you feel about that situation. And it's not nobody um, we should accept. You know, I rather look at them as the regressives in our community. Um, you know, that I think that'd be good to call them that the regressives. Uh, they don't want nothing. Not gonna do nothing. Um, they look in the victim blame, but yet I want them. I'm looking. See on YouTube, but I can't stand people talk all this crap. But when I put on these live shows, they do. They do. They don't call. They do just like they, they don't call and say. And, 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 and try to, yeah, like go in on me on the phone. That's what I'm saying. Tell me what. How am I wrong? That's what I want to know. Tell me how is white supremacy. Tell me. Maybe you can convince me. You never know. But you never. Most of them don't even try to call, and I and I make sure to put these shows up well in advance. I make sure to get the promo video up at midnight or right after midnight of the day I'm gonna do the show. That way, I'm giving ample notice the show is gonna be that evening. You get what I'm saying? So, um, I agree. It is what it trust is. Trust me. <laughs> I look at it like this. Like I said, when you said people like to play the victim, trust me, I've dealt with enough of it. That's why I cut all the haters out of my life. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't have people around me like because that. that's all they like to do is sit there, complain, and act like they owe you, like you owe them something. I'm like, come on, give me a break with that. To me, they're a bunch of whiny babies. A lot of them are. They just want something. Like yes, I they are. And another thing, Phil, I'm going to take your advice about that concealer weapon. Oh, no, I agree with you 100% with that. Because it's, it's not fair for people who are working hard, doing something with themselves, and these thugs to come there and try to do something to you. Oh, no, it's not fair. If you're in the area where them thugs are in, I tell every African-American to get armed. I tell you. And if they come to your property... The only reason why I can't get it right now because of the fact I'm in New York and um, the laws are kind of... Because when I moved from Seattle, Washington to New York for my job, um, they have said, you know, the laws are kind of lax in New York. I don't know if you know about New York. Yeah. Yeah, it's I've heard. I've heard it's hard to have a, get a gun over there. I heard it. I mean, legal, legal gun, not a gun, a legal gun. I, I heard it's hard. It is. So if you ain't, well, if you can't get it, I'm like this. I ain't got that. I'm gonna have a big old two hundred pound Cujo at home or something. I'm gonna have something. You can't. You, you ain't banning me from having Cujo. Exactly, because I don't think it's fair. You know, you work hard for something, okay, and for someone just to take it from you. Or to think they can do that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I agree to I agree to a hundred percent. That's what I love about Texas. We we have so so we are so lax here on things, and then they're still debating right now about open carry. Oh, wow. Well, they have open carry for rifles, but they're debating open carry for handguns because they have concealed carry right now. You know, so compete. You know, how Texas. Oh. People, if you want to start World War Three in Texas, tell them you're gonna take the guns away. Good luck with that one. <laughs> <laughs> this is in a, This funny. is a Republican state, big time on that. So, but you know, hey, everybody have a right to defend themselves, and it's not right for these thugs to come try to I take agree. take your stuff from you. And you hardworking and. Um, you know, feel like they, you, you know, oh, they got it. Shoot, I'm going, I'm, I'm going to take it from them. You know what I'm saying? Forget that. Exactly, because like I said, no excuse. I go up there and I work two jobs. Everybody, you know, could do the same. Exactly. So I, once I, people I, want to make up excuses and do all these things, I don't agree with that. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm like you, Phil. Progressive black. There you go. That's all. That's all I'm looking out for. I ain't looking out for them other ones. They 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 gonna have to, you know. Uh, even even they talk about the Bible so much. Even Jesus said, "All oh, won't be saved." So if he said that, then hey, we got to keep it moving. Mm-hmm. Well, when you brought up that subject about the pimp pastors or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, I'm not off too. I'm not off for too much religion because all they want to do is take your money and sleep with every woman in the church. That's what I've experienced. I'm sorry. In, in the church, it's like it's not church anymore. It's like a nightclub. I'm supposed to come as you are because I come in my because I'm a person. I like to be covered up. When I mm. come there, they, they yo, you wearing that? I'm like, are you kidding me? This is the house of the Lord. I thought you came here to hear the service. And all they want to do is pass on the collection tape four and five times. One wanted to know. Um, one church even asked me, could you hand a paper to make sure you're giving that amount? That's ridiculous. What? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes, they they wanted your pay stuff. <laughs> That's wild. They couldn't tell me nothing like that. I, they I, I, was, I, 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 I was like, that was my last minute. day. That was my first and last Sunday. I know. I'll say, hold up one that. minute. And I'll pull out my camera and say, ask me that one more time because I want people to hear exactly what you just said. You know. So. <laughs> but anyway, sister, I'm going to move yes, on. Yes, well, sister, I'm going to move on to the next uh-huh. caller. Okay, keep up what you're doing. And you have a huge fan base in New York. We love you. All right, well, thank you. Thank you. You know, a lot of people have been calling from New York lately. You know, the other sister, Mm -hmm. uh, Kim, she was from New York. Uh, What's going on? I may have to... Get out there one day. But Go I know, to New York and have a little trip. See, you shoot, know? But I don't know about going to New York City too much. Shout out to people from New York City because, man, I don't know if I can deal with them NYPD just mess with me like that. I I'm not going to gonna mess with you. I went to New York and I didn't know police well, mess with me. Maybe a well, summer woman. I don't know. I'm a but black I male. It's a totally different than a black female. Totally different thing. Oh, it ain't oh Lord nothing. I, I, I didn't say oh Lord. I said okay. Yeah, <laughs> All right. Totally different situation. It's not that bad. It really isn't. Uh, it really isn't. Well, okay. um, you can't can you can't defend yourself. That's the one thing I didn't what? like because you, especially if you are the woman now, you have to wait until after you get raped before you can't even defend yourself. You can't shoot 
you can't stab or shoot an assailant. You just have to let them do it, and then you go to the police after. I didn't like that. Erico424, you on the show. Hey, what's up? Uh, what's up, Phil? How you doing, man? What's going on? Hey, I was, uh, because I didn't, I didn't, um, because I wanted to tell in about the black genocide, um, but, but since we're talking about this, you know, that is going to lead into that. Um, because I understand, like, y'all like when folks talk about white supremacy, and I, or, 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 Oh, yeah, before we talk about personal responsibility, you want to talk about personal responsibility as well as white supremacy, and I agree. Um, because I, 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 honestly, I don't think the film talk about personal responsibility, we need to talk about white supremacy. I understand. Well, you know, okay, let's stop right there. Let's stop. Hold on. Stop. Why do we need to talk about white supremacy? Why? Here's why. I understand that. Yes, 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 brothers are socially, yes, brothers are socially conditioned, that, that, that's just how it is, we already know statistics, we already know why, you know, locking them up is not always going to solve the problem, you know, I live in California, prison capital of the world, you know, we got 30 prisons or more, 30 or 40, all of them overpopulated. County jails are overpopulated, you know, it's just, and we already know prison is big business, right? You oh, know? yeah, oh, I've done a video about we, that, we, how, we, how we, private we, prisons... We, we have the, wait, 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 and raising our young men and our young women to be good outstanding citizens. Because when a cop, because, and not always we're not saying, okay, he's a thug or she's a thug and throw him in jail, because that doesn't always work, and that doesn't always work. Uh, judge Mathis was once a thug, they were for him, and now he's a judge. You know, Malcolm Max was once a thug, they were for him, and he was a pastor. You know, we need to go back and take more initiative. And our kids, you know, our kids start writing them off. Now, okay, nobody said that a thug couldn't turn his life around. Nobody did never said that. If he chose to turn his life around and do something good, that's great. That's a testament to him that he was doing some stuff that was wrong and did that. I understand that. But what I'm saying in my issue with thugs is when they kill the innocent people in our community. And I'm not going to sit up here and go on a tangent about white supremacy, white supremacy, white supremacy. I'm not going to do that because white supremacy didn't make that fool pick up that gun and shoot that innocent child or that innocent man or an innocent woman who has nothing to do with their uh, behavior. I'm sorry. I can't defend that. I'm not going to scapegoat it at all. Because if I scapegoat it and say, well, it's, it's conditioning, well, it's this, it's that, it's like I'm okay with it. No, I'm not going to do that. People deserve to live f uh, free from a uh, crime and people are uh, trying to kill them. I'm sorry. That's just, I, I will never uh, say that. Yes, racism exists. I said that at the beginning of the show. I know that. I've showcased it a lot on my channel. But I'm sorry. We cannot blame and say that we were victimized and everything else when we look at this stuff with these thugs. I'm sorry, I don't want to live around thugs. I don't want to go out of my house and see thugs on the corner. I don't want to see that. And no person in their right mind wants to see that because they, the element they bring with them. Uh, agree. Agree. Cause, agree. Because cause I hear what you're saying, like, Let's just hold the misconception, the perception of people when people talk about um, snitching or whatever. You know, they say like, like I like I usually tell my friends like if I see a dude in the crime on the call police and they say oh you know I ain't gonna say because I don't snitch. I'm like hold up man. You know, first of all I would not do nothing. Second of all that would code amongst criminals. I don't believe in that. You don't believe you know, in what? Me you, don't believe, you don't believe in what? No, he said that the no snitching thing is a code amongst criminals. So if you're not committing crimes, now, okay, snitching is when you're doing the same thing and you tattletelling on someone because you don't want to be in trouble even though you're doing the same thing. If you're actually, if you are an innocent person and you are reporting crime, that's not snitching. 
That's just trying to keep crime out of your neighborhood. I, that is I what it is. A, I would report a crime in a minute. I would report a crime in a minute. I will. I'll call, I'll call the police in a minute. You know, it's it's it, it is so it's so sad today because when you explain it amongst people, amongst, amongst, amongst young dudes, they just don't know. They just they say, oh, oh, you shouldn't tell. You shouldn't tell the community. We need to take. We need to take take back our community and get, just reform. We gotta clean it up, you know. Yes, yes, we're in no social conditioning here. We gotta do something about ourselves. It's just like it's just like Mal, it's just like Malcolm X said. We, we we can't we can't we can't you know give it to the powers that be the problem. They, they create the problem. You got you got solve the problems yourself. Take back your community. That's just how it is. It's. All right, man. You know. Well, like I said, I definitely appreciate you calling. I'll move on to the next caller. Thank you. Um, let me talk about this before I move on to the, to the next person. He brought up the no snitching. I like, don't you see how backwards and warped that thinking is? Okay, you got a guy who shot up somebody, but it's a badge and art under you. I ain't no snitch. I ain't snitching. Police ask you, what happened? I mean, did you see anything? No, no, man. I, I ain't see nothing. And they always say, well, they always say what the excuse is, well, when a thug kills a black person, they go to jail. When a white person kills a black person, they don't go to jail. There's a lot of times that thugs are killing black people and they do not go to jail either. Why? Because they're like, man, I ain't no snitch. Shoot, I ain't no snitch. It's like a badge of honor. Like it's it's a Nobel Peace Prize or something to it. I ain't no snitch. You could be walking in a dude raping a chick. The chick is like, help me and, and whatever. And you're like, shoot, I ain't no snitch. I ain't going to say nothing. Like that's why you can't be around people like that. I'm no, sorry, you can't. you can't. That's stupid. If something happening to me, I don't want nobody to say, "Shoot, I ain't no snitch. I ain't saying nothing." <laughs> like that's why. The, that's why the neighborhoods are like the way they are. Exactly. That's why. I mean, you can't even just like um, the, the other, the last, well, the caller before last said, you can't even go to the store without something happening to you. There's certain neighborhoods I would never go in. There's certain neighborhoods, even uh, even in Raleigh, I cannot go down. Like I cannot get out my car and walk around. I can't even drive in some parts of the neighborhood because something might happen, and nobody will say anything because there's no there's no no snitch. Oh, I don't want to snitch. I ain't saying nothing. You know. Oh, that's lame. You know. I, I ain't lame. I'm not gonna say. Oh, that's the most stupidest thing ever. You yeah, can't even call for help in your own community. You can't, just like you said, you just have to sit there and if someone's raping, you just have to kind of just lay there and accept your fate, I guess. Because, because you can't get, because people don't want to snitch. Yeah, that's, that's stupid, man. That's so, that's so stupid to me. I'm going to go to the next caller. Here it goes, 316, you're on the show. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? I don't know. I'm just calling to talk a little bit about the topic we got. All right. Um, what's, what's your position on it? Well, I mean, I agree with everything, like you're saying, especially about, you know, people feeling sorry for themselves. You know what I mean? You, you made an uh, important point when you said about getting the help that you need. Because, you know... We have to recognize, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, down and out, but they need that avenue, you know, to go get that help. They need to make that decision to come out of your comfort zone to, you know, look towards better in yourself. You have mm -hmm. to recognize that, you know, you're in that position. And we do have a lot of people, you know, that, you know, refuse to do that or they blame others, you know, for, you know, their problems and just want to stick in that same position, you know, for too long. And that, you know, it's counterproductive. Exactly. Um, so why, why you, the, so why like do you think people... Like we had last week, you know, about thugs and, uh -huh. you know, the genocide and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think that, I think it's important, you know, to, to talk about, you know, all that, the several people calling you a, a coon and stuff, that's ridiculous, you know. You know, you can't even <laughs> pay that any mind because someone who's going to head that way is, a, you know, a fool to begin with. Yeah, yeah, I like, think it's, uh, you know, the funny part about gonna, that, you, know, you can agree. Uh, to, let me tell you the funny part about that, what you just said mm -hmm. about the coon part. The previous week, I did a video about food stamps, 
And I was showing that, wait a minute, ain't the black people on food stamps? I showed a graph and all this other stuff. I'm just pointing out facts that, hey, we all the same, so don't be trying to just put food stamps on black folks or whatever. Oh, boy, I was I was soul brother number one then. I said, but when I put out the, the reality that was going on within our community, that's when I became a coon because I was saying, wait a minute, it's our responsibility to fix our problems, and we can't shift blame on whitey with this. You know, now let me ask you a question. Do you think I'm pandering to my white audience when I was doing that? No, no, I don't. I don't think so at all. I mean, that's what you know. What you've done in the position that that you're in, putting videos out. Um, I mean, it's only helped. You know, a lot of issues. I think with a lot of people, mm -hmm. especially within the community, it's pretty obvious that you you know you're passionate about what you do. You know, you're passionate about the black community and you want the best for them. If, I mean, if people can't see that, you know, then they got, you know, wrong intentions to begin with, you know. And if you don't, they don't agree with you with that, why are they even spending time and wasting their time and watching when they could be, you know, on their own agenda doing their own thing? I don't, I don't get that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they could, but like I, I said, I don't believe in race pimping black people. And what I keep saying by race pimp, in other words, constantly throwing up racism and putting you to make you worse. If you feel like you're a victim, then I'm going to make it worse by constantly keep feeding you that situation. And you're just such a victim. You're so downtrodden. I'm not going to do that to you because I want you to rise above it. Like I said, I don't want black folks on no public assistance. I want black folks to be the captain of their own ship, create their own businesses, do for self. That's what I want. I don't want black people begging for nothing. I don't yeah. want black people begging in Hollywood to get on a movie. I want, I'd rather black folks create our own movies. Uh, I don't want black folks begging to get in the league. I'd rather us create our own league. Everybody can play in our own league, in our league. Don't get me wrong. Anybody. We ain't racist like that. But I'd rather us create our own when the NBA say, well, no, we ain't going to accept you to shoot football. Like I said, we walked away from football. NFL drop overnight. I mean, it'd be gone. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I mean, that's what, that's what I want us to do. Do for self. Like every other group does, every other group have their own businesses, neighborhoods, economic base. Every neighborhood have uh, police. Some have police stations within their community. Like I one time went to Chinatown, and they got a Houston Police Department right in the middle of Chinatown. Why is it in the black neighborhood we don't have a Houston Police Department sitting right there? You know what I'm saying? And, and usually the cops are people from that community. That, that patrol and everything. Like the cops, they have at that substation. You know what I'm saying? That's the stuff I'm talking about that, you know, we need to do. I'm not, so that victim blaming, yep. not going to get any of that, what I'm talking about. It's going to come from people uh, uh, working hard and pushing to be progressive. Because it's yeah, like this. When you right. get more. You know, there's too many people out there that, that can, you know, that's adding to you know, the fertile ground that keeps producing these thugs over and over, you know. Mm -hmm. And that cycle's got to stop, it's got to break. And what you're doing is you're speaking out against that, and more people need to call that out. You yeah. know, because in the end, it, <laughs> these people got to be fooled because there's no way they can tell you or tell me, you know, that they support what these thugs are doing out there. You read up what you see these thugs on TV and these interviews, they ain't the ones calling in your show. You know, right men, they just out there, you know, running them up and causing trouble everywhere they go. These people defending them, they wouldn't spare their life for one second, you know. They take everything they got, take everything they got from their kids, everything they've ever worked hard for and not be sorry about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's, we need to, you know, quit supporting and aiding, you know, the fertile grounds that keep producing these. You know, we need to figure something out and work together yeah and, you know, and, and also and, and, and also too in order for us to get there we need to you know get with other people other people in the community and actually be supportive of them um best way we can because if we don't support each other yeah. nothing grows see the difference with white folks i notice they have no problem supporting each other they have no problem you know financially helping each other they don't and us as black folks, we don't want to help each other. We don't. That's why we don't grow at all. Or, you know, for instance, like that's, I'm keeping it 100 percent real. This has nothing to do with color. It just has, just a fact. 
like we doing the crowdfunding right now so we can get a different camera uh for the actual live stream that we have going on right now now in some is now i've seen people ask for stuff for their dog bills and get it like that you know what i'm saying they support them but when it comes to black people at not all black people please don't see i'm not saying all black people when it comes to some black people they want to ridicule you they want to bring up stuff from other black people who done wrong and all this other stuff we, we like what's wrong with supporting each other and get and my thing is nobody can do anything alone malcolm x didn't do it alone dr king didn't do it alone mega Everest didn't do it alone you know everybody had marcus garvey everybody had people to help them push the message in some way form or fashion whether it's spreading the word uh you know donating you know something to help spread the message in this day and time our message is um spread through social media through our own websites and the great thing about that is that we're not controlled by the FCC. We could talk about what we want to talk about as long as we're not violating uh, local, state, and federal law. We could talk about what we want to talk about. And this thing is, as black people, we need to own our own stuff. You know, some people say, well, you should be on the news. I really don't want to be on the news because they're going to they're gonna literally destroy me. What I mean by destroy me is, yes, I'll be getting the big checks, but mm-hmm. the message I, I'm saying now, I'll have to shut it up. I couldn't say much. I'll have to say the stuff just one. And then one thing I say, I probably get suspended. Like, you know, it's like Stephen A. Smith <laughs> type of stuff. Oh, he said this and, and he needs to apologize. I'm like, I ain't apologizing for crap. So you might well fire me. I ain't. Mm-mm. That's why I wouldn't want that. You know what I'm saying? So we, you know, we need to try to support each other. Let's say, unless y'all want the economic base. The problem is as black people, we have individuals that's highly successful, but why is it that success never happens to the group? Yeah, you know, so you know, like I said, as anybody who's listening, if you haven't donated to the crowdfunding, we have we have a link in the description box uh, that'll be on the video on YouTube or any YouTube videos that uh, I got going on. I got perks. Just want to make sure you know that um, you can go through that and see what you got going on. If you want to be a guest host, as a perk for that, you, uh, for those of you, because I'm just funny like that at times. For those of you who want a custom made shot glass for a perk, we have that. That I don't sell in my spread show. Stop. Shop, I'm sorry. I mean, a lot of things we got just in case you want something in return of giving a particular donation. So um, it's still going on. Uh, Ms. Ga- cause Ms. Gabriella says she, we, we need to move up. You know, if Ms. Gabriella gets on to me, she is the mom of the show. Well, I mean, I'm trying. I want to see more. I don't want to just be in the in the house, you know. Even for me, um, I mean, I do make my YouTube videos, but at the same time, I'm always trying to. I actually want to be more than just an online personality. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but I I do want to expand. That's why I'm always networking. That's why I'm always saying, hey, I, I do this radio show. This is what I have going on. I'm always trying to advance, and you know, this goes back to personal responsibility. I know that um, you know my dreams are not to sit in someone's office and be and be pushing papers and making money for somebody else. Mm-hmm. And so I want to create an avenue for myself, which is why I'm always working, I'm always networking, I'm always reaching out to people and talking to people. And any opportunity that opens up, I take it. Doesn't matter how big or how small, I'll take it because you never know. And so. I'm not going to sit there and have that as an excuse and say, oh, well, oh, what was me? I'm a lowly black woman. You know, I'll never make anything of myself. The only future I have is being a booty model and a stripper and a twerker and all that. I'm not going to sit there and not feel, I mean, there's more to life than that. If that's what you want to do, that's on you. Go ahead and do you. But for me, I see more, you know, in my future. All right. So, you know, uh, brother. I, I will. Do what? I will be. I said I will be helping, and I will donate to the cause because I. Oh, I well, we, de- we definitely appreciate that, doing, and I want to keep seeing that too. Well, I definitely appreciate that. Like I said, yeah. it's it's to spread this message, man. I mean, because like I said, what what motivates me even more is that call I got earlier. That motivates me, you know, to see to hear a young man turn his life around based off of watching youtube video so obviously what we got going on here is affecting people in a positive light and when i meet people in the street that actually recognize me it's always something positive 
you know, and it's from like say mm-hmm. a lot of younger younger men, and that's good. You know, I, I love that, and that's really what we're trying to do over here. You know, is do something positive. So mm-hmm. I appreciate you calling and uh, like you say. Have, you, what'd you say? You have even helped me with financial decisions because I've watched your financial videos, mm-hmm. and you've helped me in that area, like financially, like you were talking about how to restore your credit. You know about the importance of putting money away and things like that. So I appreciate that. Yeah, and I haven't I haven't got into it and yet. I haven't got into it yet, but I also want to do a video about uh, buying stocks um, because you know your your brother your brother do buy stocks. So, but I just haven't got into that yet. How yeah. you can do it so easily? I mean, it's too easy to do it. Uh, but appreciate you calling, man. All right, thank you. Uh, um, yeah, we're trying to put our good information out here. That's what we're trying to do because it is like I tell people, playing the victim, you know, is not going to get any progression. Like what that young man said about uh, watching a video to learn about your money, uh, credit. Uh, like I said, eventually I'm going to put out the video about buying stocks. That's how you build your economic base. You can't mm-hmm. build it off of, well, white supremacy and racism and you're not going to build anything. What about your kids? What about your future? Don't you got some dreams? Don't you want to do something for yourself? Don't you want to be able to give back to kids that's less fortunate? Like I was telling my wife today, I want to create an advice your media scholarship program that I can at least give a scholarship to, you know, uh, some, some uh, kids who, who deserve it, uh, who don't have the uh, means to at least pay for some of the college. Uh, I mean, that's things that I would lo- want to do. I mean, I want to definitely give back. But how can I do that if we don't try to expand, grow, and uh, bring you know other people in? You know, eventually we want a, a, a studio, a different studio to have now. That you know, like I said, everything going right. Shoot, I put that studio together. You may see Miss Gabriella twenty four seven on the set. You never know. But by that time, I have to pay Miss Gabriella some good money for that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, because I don't do that kind of business. But uh, let me go ahead and go to the next call. Air code 832, you on the show. How y'all doing? I'm doing good. How you doing? All right. What's on your mind? Um, about the topic, I agree and disagree. All right, give me what okay, you... Okay, give me the disagree about Disagree, it. yes. Please give me the disagree. Um... There are some people who are actually victims of things, and I, and I don't want those people to be dismissed because every life isn't equitable for everybody. So, like you talked about earlier about, you know, the people who've been molested, they might mentally be a little messed up for a while. You know, there, there may be people who had traumatic experiences, they may be a little bit messed up for a while. They may need a little more help than somebody who just got injured or something or saw something bad one day. So Okay. But then well, I, I do agree there are people who play this. All right. So you're saying that because you, you've had a traumatic experience, does that mean that you need to stay down or? No. I'm saying that because you've had a traumatic experience, it may take you longer to get up. But some people it just may. like to dismiss it. it okay, I'll give you that. But that doesn't that's not an excuse to stay down. I'm not even ashamed to admit it. I was molested when I was no. eight. For six months, I was molested every single night. Six months. You don't see me blaming men and, and having a victim mentality. So I'm, okay, yeah, and I actually did have to go to counseling and get over it. And I'm still, yes, it still does bother me. But at the same time, I'm not going to sit there and say, because that happened to me, I'm going to stay down forever, and I'm going to sit there and turn to just getting into negative activities. That doesn't solve anything. And so I really wish more people would say, I mean, and I don't even want to talk about my own mom, but she had some traumatic experiences. She was abused. Okay, she was abused her whole child, a lot of her childhood. So you can't sit, and she's doing very well for herself. She's already retired, retired military. So you can't just sit there and say that because something bad happened to you in your childhood or something bad, you, you didn't have the most ideal situation growing up, that that means that you need to stay down forever and you just have to adapt this, oh, what was me mentality. My mom even told me the same thing when I was going, getting over my issue, you know? 
is that you can't you can't allow this whatever it is that happened to you you gotta have to eventually you gotta have to I don't know if you gotta go to church or you have to pray or go to counseling whatever you have to do but you cannot allow that to keep you down forever you can't say, oh, well, oh, what was me? I'll never be anything oh, and adopt a victim mentality. Whether it's conditioning, racism, whatever you want to call it, you can, no matter, if you work hard, you can rise out of any situation. So I, I really cannot accept that. I mean, you can believe that if that's what you want to. You have every right. No. All right, no. no well, it's, not, it's not a belief. It's, it's, it's more for a person from an ideal situation will not probably be at the same place as a person from a traumatic situation in the same lifespan at the same time. That's what I mean. So sometimes when you say people are, um, are playing the victim, I, I do agree. Some people are playing the victim. But I think, you know, as far as life goes, it might, everybody is not going to be at the same place around the same time because they may have worse experiences than others. But we not. But I have never created a measuring stick to say, well, if this happened to you by this time, you need to be here. I never said that. What I stated was that being a perpetual victim in your mindset and feeling sorry for yourself will keep you uh, not moving along in life. And I gave that example about a car. You beat your parked car. You're not moving. You're revving up all day long. People hear you, but you're not going anywhere. And that's counterproductive to your progress in life. It's counterproductive within the black community when we do that uh, as a community to blame other things uh, that we should just move on past. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying move past uh, racism and discrimination in our history. I ain't saying move on past. But I'm saying don't use it as an excuse to not do anything f to make our community better. That, that's what I'm saying. I said earlier in the show, get counseling if you need it. Pray about it. Do both. Whatever you think you got to do. Uh, take take you a, a meditation trip. I don't know whatever you got to do. But whatever you have to do, do it so you can move on in your life. Because life is too short to be victim victimizing yourself in the mind and feeling sorry. You definitely don't li need to listen to people who should tell you, well, you need to feel sorry for yourself because this happened to you. They, they are actually worse to listen to. Mm -hmm. I, I do get that too. It's just like one other thing I think of sometimes is, you know, the two, if there's a victim, there's got to be a victimizer. And sometimes, by telling people to not play the victim, we can't, we in a in a low key pseudo way condone or excuse the victimizer. Like to the degree what you were talking about with the uh, the uh, thugs and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a funny situation. It's not necessarily a funny situation, but if you got a, a, a thug will be a victimizer who kills or shoots or, or, or does something to, to a person who has, who's not in that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But if a person who's not in that lifestyle finds out about that and then goes to victimize the thug, it seems like we, stick, we flip it around then and then become like, well, you shouldn't be able to do that to that person. Like, if... If, a, if, if you shouldn't be a victim and you shouldn't be a victimizer, then what happens when somebody says, well, 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 have to well brother, 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 man, I'm going to tell you something right now. Anytime an innocent person is going to confront a thug, it's because that thug is doing something that is dangerous to their life, their health, their property, or something. I've never advocated just to go out there and just start uh, messing with thugs for no reason. I'm saying if they come on your property doing you something and if you're within a, a state that you can uh, use firearms, light them up. That's what I said. I have no problem saying that <laughs> because they but do it to innocent it, people I, all the time. I agree with you. What I'm saying is we do have one of those type of communities. Like where I grew up at, like, okay, I grew up on the west side of Chicago. You got mm -hmm. gangs who bother people. And the community would say some things like, you know, we need to get rid of these thugs. But if the people who weren't in the gang started bothering the gangsters, ironically, guess who they would turn into the police? Who? Who they turn into the police? You get what I'm, what I'm saying? Who they turn into the police? The people that wasn't gangsters that was bullying the gangsters out of their way. That, you know... 
You have to, but see, you have to do that smart. You can't, yeah. If you're doing vigilante justice, then yeah, that's how they how they're gonna get you. It's so easy to force the police to do their job. It's kind of easy. Like I would say, okay, you know, if I had to organize and say this neighborhood horrible, let's get together and this is what we gonna do. We see these thugs out here. Every person in the neighborhood call call the police all at the same time. Blow up their switchboard. And the moment they answer you, write down when they answer you and when they showed up. And if they get 100 to 200 calls constantly coming in every time they got thugs out, eventually they'll get tired of it. Then I would uh, immense a mass uh, protest in front of City Hall to say, y'all going to do something about these thugs. And, and and put all the pictures of people out there these thugs have killed. And you can't kind of say put that pressure on them. You you take the cameras, put this junk up on social media, and, and embarrass the hell out of that city. And you constantly doing what I'm saying. These thugs on your property, light them up. They're going to give because they don't want that kind of attention. But that takes hard work to do that. And the only time we're willing to protest and make noise unless Darren Wilson or George Zimmerman types kill one of our brothers or sisters. We have to use that same protest and anger against these thugs and we can get rid of them because we either the police going to do their job or we're going to make you do your job. That's simple. Because we're paying taxes and that taxes go to your salary. So you're going to do your job whether you like it or not or we're going to raise hell and make sure every, the hell we're raising is legal, lawful, and it's going to be all on the internet so the world can see it. It's that simple. We live in a great time period of exposure. It's not that hard. Martin and them uh, fought stuff and they even have social media cameras on everything. So, I mean, we have no excuse now. That That's the way I would say to organize and fight. But that's a solution. Because everybody say, what's the solution? I'm giving a solution. But see, I'm not a leader like that. It can be one. Do what? There is a there is an aspect where the badge and the flag are kind of intertwined. What I, what I mean by flag is gang flag. So I I'm not I agree with you, but I also we also see that even the exposure doesn't necessarily fix the problem at times. Oh, exposure you know, exposure does. I know a what lot. you're talking about with the folks and the moving. If they go to another block. You start all over again. I'm not oh, advocating. You know what? This is how I would feel know, about the situation. Hold on. You said if they move to another block and they never return, I'm yeah. talking about like I'm talking about. You mean out of, to a different neighborhood or just a different street? Just a different street. Oh no, we're gonna follow you all the way until you get out of our neighborhood. You go to the next block. We're gonna we're gonna make sure we're there. We're gonna make sure the police can be called and everything. It won't stop you got that neighborhood. Trust me, they are gonna get sick of it because the police will get tired of you calling them like that. They say, man, please go out there and see what them people keep calling about. I'm sick of answering the phone two hundred times in a night. It's getting old. Trust me, they'll get tired of it. It's that simple. It can be done. And black people need to organize uh, neighborhood, I, I agree. neighborhood watch. They they need to organize uh like homeowner type associations. And and home association is great because everybody chip in and they, they demolish them old houses, cut them yard uh, them uh, lot vacant lots. If you demolish them old houses, them crackheads and go in, that'll stop some of that too. I mean, we, we you have to really take an aggressive approach. You know, and, and, and once you take this stuff apart, then you start getting contractors in to make the place look good, look nice, plant some trees. You know what I'm saying? Make the place look like it's a good place to live. It could be done. It's not impossible because black folks oh, have a $1 trillion buying power. You mean to tell me you can't invest some of that $1 trillion into your neighborhood? Oh, I hope. I don't disagree with that at all. I'm just saying, you know. Just okay, like but, you said, but like I say, when people tell me what's the solution, I'm victims, giving a solution. You need to take an aggressive approach to things to not be victims. That, is, that isn't being a victim at that point. At that point, you're being proactive. You're being progressive. You're saying the hell with this stuff. We're sick of it. We're getting these thugs out of here. And you don't need uh, 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 the, the government to do it for you, other than the fact is do your job and, and get them fools away from here. That's far as you need to do. After them fools are gone, we're going to take care of our stuff. We're going to build our own grocery store in here. We're going to start our own little uh, pharmacy. We're going to have law offices here. We're going to do all of this stuff here. We got enough money within our community to build this stuff. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's getting the spirit of Black Wall Street within your own neighborhood. If 
Since saying that you brought that up, I'm hoping that we do that all over again. But we can't. Do, well, we can't do it. We can't do it with thugs again, on the corner. You have to defend it. But we can't do it with thugs on the corner because all the people who are doctors and lawyers yeah. and and jewelers and architects and everything else, they have to stay in the community to do all that work within the community. Well, those people are not going to stay there if they were within a financial means. They don't have to because I'm sorry. You go out, you work hard, and if you get you a, you build you a nice house. Let's say within the community, you build you a house, and you you know you buy a, maybe a Mercedes Benz that what you want, or you may buy a Lexus or whatever. You don't want those thugs going to rob your house and do all this other stuff. Why would you want that? So it's very counterproductive to have the thugs there, so those who would higher income brackets could stay within the community, so you can invest back into the community. So thugs is really a problem for the betterment of the community. They, they, okay, they absolutely are a problem. At this point, it's just like, uh, what is the GDP? The biggest thing this country um, invests in is defense. So, if, and that's to, quote, unquote, not, not necessarily be a victim. So if, we want, if we're going to not be victims, we do have to actively and aggressively learn to defend ourselves. I'm not, I'm not just from outside, but absolutely from within, too. I'm just saying, you know, if we're going to not be victims, we're going to start having to, you know, not just be so kumbaya all the time, too. I agree, because but you have to get aggressive. Get of, you take that aggressive we, we approach. We can't get rid of the thugs with, with quote unquote the police help all the time because they're too intertwined to make sure things are. I'm messed sorry. Up. Oh yes, you can get rid of thugs the police help because you demand they do their job. One thing about white folks, I'm gonna tell you about this. They demand what they police do that job. And if they don't do their job, they wanna make a ruckus about right. it because they pay taxes just as much as you pay taxes. But the difference is they demand they do their job and they won't shut up till they do their job. And, and black folks are like, well, you know, I ain't going to say nothing. No, you pay taxes every year for them police. Let They need to do their job, period. They got to do their job. And if black folks don't make them but do the anything. the power structure for that police unit is just, matches their uh, ethnic group. Now, if we had our own police of our own ethnic group that would answer to us, I can get it. But, but degree, that doesn't matter. Don't, don't the color that. of their skin doesn't matter at the end of the day when it comes to police. It don't matter if it's white cops, black cops, you still got to pay taxes. Since you're paying taxes, that means whoever color the cop is, he needs or she needs to do their job. And if not, cause a ruckus so much that they start being fired or the chief gets fired or whatever. I'm sorry, colors is not going to cut it. Well, because they got black cops all around the police departments and, and, and they don't mean nothing. They're going to do their job. I'm not saying because they're black that they're, they're, I mean they're easily they're easy to be added to like you talked about with the HPD in Chinatown mm -hmm. I'm sure those are Asian officers probably in that HPD and I'm sure they know the people in that community mm -hmm. and I'm sure those people will hold them accountable if something goes awry that shouldn't go awry but also, also black people got to become cops for that to work and you know, in the black community, you become a cop, you you the next thing to the clan. You're a sellout, you're a snitch, you're working for the man, you're working for the beast, and everything else. So how could that work without people as black becoming police officers? I mean, that's a catch-22 on that would one. be a problem. Yeah, exactly. Is, I mean, I, I, I don't like cops necessarily, but I don't disrespect black cops at all. I really don't disrespect cops at all, but, you know... I know they got it a little bit tough because they're getting it both ways. They're getting it in exactly. They, they get time. it both ways. I know they do. But what I'm saying is, we have to remove that. Well, if you're a cop, we hate you, you, and all this other stuff for black because black people are like, I don't want to be no cop. I don't want to be hated by my community. You know, some of them feel that way and maybe want to be a cop and want to do the right thing and try to get rid of these thugs and, and help the kids and all this other stuff. You know what I'm saying? I mean. Everybody in every group have police officers, and we can have them too. Um, that's going to do the right thing. That's not going to be Uncle Ruckus, and, and you know what I'm saying acting like that police officer from a uh, boys from the hood or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's it's solutions to everything, brother. It is solutions, but the problem is, oh, yeah, yeah. unfortunately, I some and I say some black people don't want to take these hard stances and solutions. That's why I said if I had the position, and I'm not saying him as a man. 
But if I had the position of Al Sharpton where I could show up and just cameras would follow me, oh, stuff would be getting done. But they'd probably kill me too because stuff would be, get, be getting done. But that's one of the things. Like, okay, what, what the, the fear of that, we're going to die. We all going to die. But the fear of not standing for something, only standing so far because you're scared that somebody else is going to off you, kind of paralyzes. That is part of the victim mentality. Well that's, well, that's a reality. Once you start bucking in this country pretty good, you start, well, I'm going to say this much. Martin Luther King didn't catch a bullet until Martin Luther King got uh, everybody on board, in which he did. Not just black folks, I'm talking about everybody. That's when they say he was the most dangerous man in the country. I mean, Martin Luther King can command that many people, and not just black folks, blacks, whites, whatever. He was touching everybody. So he had, they had to do something to him. When a man getting, especially a black man getting that powerful, please. Well, you know technically, it was it was it was more so he started speaking about economy and he was linking up with Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm X, and the Black Panthers. That unity was part was a bigger part of that. Often, people. Yeah, because but a lot of white as, people got all on board of those too. Guys died separately, but they were unified during that time. Yeah, but doc, but also a lot of whites got on board with him about pushing for economic. He wanted economic stimulus for the poor, and and everybody was on board with that with, with Dr. King, and that was benefiting. And that's when he was moving to more so like a human rights and just black civil rights, and they they couldn't deal with that. You know how that is, J. Edgar Hoover. He hated people like King, uh, Malcolm X. Malcolm they X. I think, I think if King and I Malcolm, get. I think if uh, Malcolm X and Dr. King would have like joined together like after the fact, you know, man, that'd have been too powerful for him. So I, you know. So, it's crazy, you know, how something happened to the both of them. At the same time, just because they're dead doesn't mean we can't, as people, link up the same way now. Oh, I agree with that 100%. That's, but we live in a different time period. Like I said, we can't feel we're victims. We got to do things the way we do them, which is greater now. We do it through the Internet, social media. Uh, we could travel information so quick. We can organize so quick. I mean, people organize for doing flash mobs over the internet. Something that's stupid. We can organize a boycott, or organize a protest, or whatever. And else. we did, and we can need to st- keep doing it. Because remember when people were pro- we protested for Black Friday, and they st- they lost about thirteen percent. And we need to do it again this year. Yeah. But not even then. We need to actually do something. We need to actually make something happen instead yeah. of just sitting there talking. Because if we start boycotting again, that's when stuff's really gonna change. Because that's what they have to listen. The way you heard him. Yeah, uh, instead of boycotting, we just actively find all of the things that are black owned and black made and just promote those by the time Black Friday hits and just buy that stuff. They can still, the other businesses still take a loss, but our businesses ca- catch a gain. I agree with you, but I think we need, America's a capitalistic society. They live and breathe on greed. And I'm telling you, the most effective weapon against when they're treating you bad is a boycott. I'm telling you. And blacks spent a lot of money. Blacks only keep their money in their hands only for six hours on average. We're the biggest spender in America. So if the biggest spender in America um, say, you know what? We're not spending our money with you because you do this. You don't hire us. You don't treat us right. You profile us, whatever, and make it known we're not shopping in your store and stick with it. For like a year, trust me, they be begging black people. What, what we got to do? What do we got to do? Because we never, I tell people as black people, nobody respect us because we don't impose economic sanctions on people, on companies when they do this. Trust me, when I was screaming about boycotts, I had so many uh, people who's not in, who has nothing to do with these businesses say, why you want to boycott businesses? What do the people do wrong in the businesses that have nothing to do with it? Like, wait a minute, why is that scaring you? Because I'm saying boycott. It has nothing to do with you. They get afraid when you say when black people say not to spend their own money. That tells me a lot. Trust me, that does. You can scream and yell on the street all day long about protesting. Forget a protest. I wouldn't say protest nothing unless unless just to make a scene so people can see you. But boycott. <laughs> Boycott Walmart. Boycott whatever you think that is not right or treating black people bad or disrespecting us. That's all you got to do. And then we'll get our respect. But we, since we do live in this information and technology age, 
You can still go to Walmart and only buy things made by black people if they have it in the store. Now, if they don't, definitely you can't, find, you can't hardly store. find something made by white people in the store because everything made in China. And that's a problem, too. That's a big problem. That's why a lot of us don't have jobs because everything made in China or maybe made in Mexico. Nothing made in USA anymore. You know, back when I was growing up, nobody wanted Chinese but, anything because it was cheaply made. Now everything is Chinese. But anyway. You don't mind. But what they said, brother, I, I didn't even go ahead and move on. I got to take these other calls. These people get mad at me. So appreciate you. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. So you must get, you know, we're, we're about solutions over here. And I, I'm, I'm mentioning solutions, not just talking about the problem. And we're not uh, going to sit there and whine and complain. Because that, at the end of the day, that whole play. Okay. Let's just say, for example, and we wanted to, we wanted to humor our audience and say, that everything was the white man's fault and say, oh, woe is me, oh, woe is me, oh, you know, this is the white, we can't do anything, white supremacy, black suppression. We just kept talking about that all night long. At the end of that conversation, nothing will, nothing will come out of that. Nothing. No ideas, no nothing, no, even just something to say, okay, maybe we could do this. You know what I'm saying? Like the boycott of Black Friday, that was great. They lost money. That was awesome. I was definitely on board with it. I can do that again this year. It doesn't bother me none. Because I tell people, you don't need the people to tell you when to shop. You do it whenever you want to. And then this commercialization, just to take people's money? No. When these have these companies don't even respect you like that. Uh, I'm going to go to the next caller. Uh, Eric Cole, 513, you're on the show. Hello? Hello, you're on the show. Hi, um, I called in earlier, but we, uh, we got disconnected. Okay. Um, well, what what you were saying? Is I, real, I, real, real quick. Uh, I was the I was the first person he called. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, we got disconnected. I just wanted to say, um, uh, I don't uh, feel uh, that people should feel sorry for for themselves because uh, I feel that people victimized themselves too much to uh uh to keep themselves down because wait a minute wait a minute wait 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 wait, wait a minute wait a minute Mr. Gabriel is that the first caller yeah he just he, that's what he said yeah no no he was was he was the first one that talked which one you said that never mind when I say what they say he was trolling and he said something that I can't repeat <laughs> oh that oh so it was him yeah oh okay I just wanted to make sure all right, let me go to somebody who was who's actually trying to talk on you. I ain't playing that. Uh, Erico two four zero, you on the show? Hey, Phil, this is Ty. What's going on? Hey, um, not much. I just got off from work and um, just made the show. But I came in actually. I wanted to talk about the victim thing, and I wanted to talk about why I believe that you know that's such a prevalent thing, and what I think needs to happen to get that to go away. Uh, but before that, I know one interesting thing that people uh, like to reference a lot, and I just think it's um, pretty interesting, is um, when people talk about the church and how it's become more of a show uh, for entertainment than has about worship and other different things. Mm-hmm. Um, the interesting thing about that that I've always found is, is that prior to the early 20s, the church was not like that. And if you remember anything about 1921 up to 1938, that was a hard period for black people. In the middle of that, you had the Depression in 29, you had Black Wall Street in 21, and 38 was when the labor laws came into effect for minimum wage, which, if you remember, you had right after Black Wall Street, a bunch of African Americans were journeying up north for like the third or fourth time to get jobs because all their jobs had been destroyed in the South. And so that's when um, the union in the North decided they were going to push for minimum wage because the blacks could work for cheaper than they ever could, and they were taking all the jobs. So it was hard to get young people into the church participating. And it was during that time you had um, this really famous group, a couple of famous groups, um, the Ward Singers and all these other people, orchestrated a new format for how the black churches would do the service. 
and they started putting in the switch formats and all these different things into the sermons where you have, you know, instead of having song and sermon, it would be, you know, the organ and all this stuff while mm-hmm. the pastor's preaching. It was it became more of a show. What they were trying to do was save the church because the church was not making any money. The church was not making any money. A lot of them had been bombed and burned up, and it was, it was hard to rebuild. And when the people, we say the people didn't have any money, but all of a sudden when things got entertaining, they came together and pooled money together. So the money came from somewhere. It was like, oh, we don't have any money, but as soon as the gyrating and everything started, here comes the money. So, um, you know, I, it's a catch-22 because it was a good thing. It was very spiritual because it, it was very spiritual, but you had a lot of people take advantage of that when they saw that this was a cash cow. Mm-hmm. That if you started treating choirs like bands and having them travel around and you pay, you had pastors and churches, you know, instead of taking up an offering for the visiting choir, they would do other deals to try to cut money or not give money to the visiting choir and pocket it. So the corruption always starts wherever there's an economy, wherever there's money, there's always going to be somebody corrupt that will want to take advantage. But um, the interesting thing about us as a community is, is that the, the thing that we love the most is the thing that's killing us the most. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, the victim mentality for many people is all they got. <laughs> that is all they got. And I know it sounds bad, but, you know, if you look at all of your, well, not all, but if you look at a lot of your famous musicians and, and, and actors and different things, there has been a role that has been designed for a lot of black people, particularly black men, they have to play this part. They have to be this caricature. Mm-hmm. And just like back in the days where you had the shucking and jiving and all this stuff to, to, to make money because that was the only role that you could play, well, we're selling that to ourselves. It's like this is the role that we conform to. And instead of that being looked, up, looked at as a bad thing, we painted it as a good thing. You know, um, during that time, the 20s up to, you know, uh, to the just before the 50s, it was hard to get young people to get involved in things because they saw all of the, you know, the corruption in America. They were not from their grandparents' time with the slave fields and all that stuff, so they couldn't get a picture of how good they had it or how much things have changed. They just knew they were suffering right then. Mm-hmm. So every generation has it. It's a further falling away because and the generation gap gets wider. But now we have a new problem, and we've had it for a couple of decades now, is a gender gap. Our young black men, although they're more educated now than they ever were, and there's not as many of them in jail as as they were in proportion to school anymore, like in the 90s, they're trailing behind the women significantly. 2010 was a big year for black women in, in, um, in our country's education system because more black women graduated from college in 2010 than ever before. Mm-hmm. And yeah, black, yeah, black women doing it on them degrees. I give them that. They, they're getting more master's degrees huh? and doctors. Black women are really, actually, by doing the research, black women is the most educated uh, group in America, is black women. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. But, but, so it's a they, but. Uh, the thing about the difference between the black woman and the, and the man is, is or the, the, the guys and the, and the females is, the females have always, whether they want it to or not, been pushed. They didn't really get a choice. They go about it. You know, if you're the one that's going to end up taking care of the baby, you're the one that's going to have to make the home, you're the one you can't sleep. You don't really get a choice. It's yeah. either you make something out of your life, however small or great it may be, or you die. Plain and simple. Mm. The young men, they don't have that same push anymore. There's just excuses. Everybody's creating this world for them where if they don't make it or they fail, you know, it's, oh, it's the system. Oh, it's this. Oh, there's always something. You blame your mama if you don't have everybody else to blame. <laughs> you know, there's always somebody for them to blame. And yeah, unfortunately, well, let me, we have let me, inter- started coddling them. Let me interject something for a minute. You was talking about the education of black women. I did the uh, research on uh, the demographics on, you know, based on who's the most educated in numbers or whatever. And if you look at, you know, like black women being the most educated and then after them would be Asian women um, and then white women come in number mm-hmm. three. But yet now this is when racism and discrimination comes in. This is true racism and discrimination I'm talking about. Uh, when it comes to hiring practices, 
you don't see most of your HR departments, most of your uh, administrative assistants, administrative managers, and all this other stuff be black women based on education standards. It should be mostly them. But or after them, it should be mostly Asian women. But based on education, you don't see that. You see more still white women. And that's where the racism aspect come in uh, with the hiring practices. Now, I have no issue discussing that aspect of it because that's some true stuff right there what I'm talking about. How is it you going to have one group of women the most educated, but yet the third uh, group of women who's not there where the number one's at, yet they hold in most of the jobs, no matter where you go? I mean, high paying yeah. jobs. That, that that is that is a very real thing. Um, one thing that I noticed about that is, and it's sad. Um, if you ever notice, okay, if I take water, I think I said this before once to, to somebody else earlier today. If I take water, right, and I put it in a thimble, right, and I take a a, a drop, an eyedropper, and I drop lemon juice into that thimble, that whole thimble of water is going to come become lemonade. Now, if I take a whole body of water like an ocean, and I drop an eyedropper of lemon juice in the ocean, you won't even notice that there was ever any lemon in that water at all because it got mm -hmm. dissolved away, it's diluted, because mm -hmm. the, 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 there's more mass and volume in that ocean than there is in that thimble of water. So, you know, that's always been the case with black people, even, you know, back in World War II with the code breakers and different things. We had a lot of black people who were cryptographers and who were decrypting stuff, you know, working for the president. And they, they, it was a secret. They were not allowed to divulge the fact that they were hiring African Americans to break codes. They just were not. This nation just was not allowed to show that there were black people in all these positions covertly, working for covert agencies, working for the DOD, doing these important things. They just could not be out front, could not get any credit. So... You know, it, it kind of trickles from that. I mean, when you think about, oh, who do we want in these positions, who do we want, people are naturally going to say, okay, they're going to picture other people. They're not going to picture, and that, for me, it goes back to the image that we sell ourselves. You know, we can break this. I mean, if you look in Africa right now, in Eastern Africa, tech companies are exploding all over Kenya. Tech companies are exploding all over Eastern Africa. And the people who are backing or primary investors or who actually want to buy those companies are British or the British. They want to buy those companies. And we as African Americans, not too many African Americans, but all our millions have invested in Eastern African tech companies. And some of these people have built tech companies from nothing, like from dirt. Like they had nothing, no nothing. Um, well, like, let, me, well like let, me you, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you right. a question real quick. You know, uh, you have information on some of these companies that I could research uh, myself or whatever. That because hey, I'm always looking to. Yeah, um, there's a tel there's a telecom company called Safari. I think it's called Safari Net or something like that. There's another company called. Um, they make a product called a Brick, and it's a Kenyan company. And the Brick is an internet to go device, but what it is is it's it's made for researchers out in the field who want to send data all over the world. You can put 3G and 4G SIM cards in that thing, and it's built to, you can dip it in sand, throw it in water, you can charge it with battery from your car. They made that device. It's more, it's more potent and more powerful than some of the, any other internet to go device that you could think of. And the Brits are buying it up. Um, the Safari company that, that has a whole lot of, um, of the cellular networks in Eastern Africa, the Brits bought 40% of that. Um, it's a ton of companies in Eastern Africa. They are exploding, and right now the Chinese are in Eastern and Southern Africa because the problem with Eastern Africa is they don't have a lot of manufacturing, but they have tons of engineers. Well, the Chinese have manufacturing. So China, they're doing a lot of business in Africa. They've been in Africa for years. It's just that people don't, they're not paying attention to it. But okay. now China is in Africa because that is where the resources are. Okay. Well, and like they're getting well, citizenship definitely, in Africa, too. Well, what I'll do, I'll definitely look at it because I pulled up a website that shows some, a lot of the uh, tech companies in Kenya. I'll, I'll look at it. i look at it. And shoot, if it's a sound investment or whatever, you know, when I uh, you know, want to start doing some little bit more investing, I'll definitely invest into that. I'm always looking to, you know, invest into something if I can. You know how that goes. But, uh, brother, I appreciate, appreciate your right. calling because I'm good. I need to take other callers. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, Miss Gabriella. Um, let's go to the next call. Air code six zero one. You on the show? 
you doing today, brother? I'm doing good. What's going on? What's 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 your mind about the topic? Oh uh, man, uh, I feel kind of uh, I don't know, kind of torn between. Um, I don't feel like it's good to play victim, even mm-hmm. if you are a victim. Mm-hmm. I mean, if somebody hits you on the floor, it's not good. I mean, if, if somebody comes and sneaks you and hits you on the floor, you can do two things. You can stay on the floor and cry about how they hit you, or you can try to get up as much strength as you can to fight them back. Yeah. So I definitely feel like, you, to, you know what I'm saying, you need to fight back. Don't take, I don't want any black people that's hearing this to think that I'm saying forget our past, forget our, our past is going to let us know how to handle our future. But at the same time, in order for us to have a future, we got to stop forgetting. The, we, got, we have to start to forget the past and focus more on the future. So that's my thing about it. And uh, the one thing that I think that we can do about it is the, the church is real big in the black community. Um, the reason why it's being pimped is because people are uh, studying the religion of Christianity and they're not being taught the actual facts of the Bible. If they were taught, if black people were following the actual facts of the Bible and the laws of the Bible, you would see it in our daily lives, and it, it would be, you know, um, practice. And since the church is a, a billion-dollar industry, if you are a person that's thinking about helping your uh, people, I suggest you try to go in and learn as much about the Bible as you can, and then try to convey as many people in your area into unifying those black people around the Bible instead of just coming at them telling them about black power because they're already inside of the Christian doctrine. So you come at them how they, you know, like, basically like how Mark Garvey did with the UNIA. You had the UNIA and then you had the Ku Klux Klan at the same time. Both of them were Christian organizations. Mm-hmm. So the religion is not the problem. The religion is a tool. And if we learn how to use the tool, then we can better ourselves. That's all I want to say, and thank you for your time, brother. It's an honor being on your show. Oh, thank you, Shu. It's, it's an honor for you to uh, drop that knowledge, my brother. All right, Miss Gabriella. Um, to let everybody know the call in number is 347 996 3350. Press the number one button. Now, Miss Gabriella, you know who I'm looking for to call? Who? Oh. Our, our favorite friend. Because because I want to see he gonna he going to call the night. Kids Mac. <laughs> I'm looking. Oh boy, I hope he call. Kids Mac, if you're listening, call the show because I saw that comment you left. So so go ahead and call because I want you to, to explain yourself because you know good and well we we, we ain't gonna see eye to eye on that comment you left on that on that YouTube. You know what I'm saying? You know because you you ought, you ought to know better than that. But um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what he said. I want to know now. Yeah, let me let me see if I can get to what he said. Let me see if I can get to it. Oh my God, where is it? Let me see if I could scroll down to what he said. It was on that video I made about. Where is it? Come on, it's down here somewhere. I know I saw it. Or oh, did I approve it for a reason? Because certain comments, the people try to flag as spam, but it's not spam. But it's it's on my uh hold on let me go let me go to the to the uh thing here so I can find it. And I can read it what exactly what he said. So everybody know why I want to talk to Kids Mac tonight. Let me see this video right here. About the, the show the show promo. Okay. Here we go. Kids Mac, his comment. Say you sound like some uppity Negro <laughs> talking about this victim ish. When I heard you on your talk show, you sounded uppity in a way just because you got a nice job in a house. Don't look down on others who did not have the same opportunities. I come from the hood. I come from struggle. What are you talking about? I didn't grow up in suburbia. I, I, but anyway, because they talk about their shortcomings in life. They're now a victim. Like, what is he talking about? Okay. There are some people who are, let me say lazy, but racism and institutional racism is real. And we have acknowledged that. Have we not? He said, I bet when you lose your job and house, it'll be a different story. Then you would not want people telling you to pull yourselves up by your bootstraps. I did lose my home. I lost everything I worked for. 
I went from having a and you lost your job too. And I've lost and I've lost my job. I lost you know a lot of stuff. So what are you talking about? Shoot, I've been on. I've, I had to rebuild all over again. He said you uh, only until something happens. You advise show then a different story. Then that's why you're so comfortable saying how other people play the victim as an excuse. I said that the previous generations in our past. Uh, this down to blacks so are depending on your enemy for help. The civil rights generation, I pass any wealth or businesses down to the current generation. Where everybody attacks the current generation because of the situation they were put in. So, Kids Mac, please call the show so we can dissect this comment, sir. Oh my god, I wish he called the show because normally he does. He normally calls in. Um, what's Gary? What you think about that comment from Kids Mac? <laughs> Oh man, I think it was. Um, I think that the problem is is that he he maybe he does not know the whole story because neither of us had the best. You know, we weren't we didn't always have the best of the best of everything. It wasn't in, like I was comfortable, and I didn't ever. You know, thankfully I never had a really 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 bad situation where I had to worry about um, you know rodents and and roaches and all kind of stuff. And I didn't have to worry about the police kicking down my door and all that. It was never that bad. But things weren't always perfect. I mean, I, I talked about having a uh, shop for clothes at the thrift store. And, you know, I, we didn't always have the best of everything. But my parents always did make sure that we were at least comfortable. You know, we were like average. It was like for the most part, I would say for the first half, it was just like either a little bit kind of like low middle class for most of it. So it's not like I had the best situation in the whole world. Um, the reason why I was never in the projects was just because my mom didn't want me to have to go through some of the things that were, you know, she didn't want me to be around certain types of people. And no, I'm not sitting there saying I'm uppity and I'm better than anybody else. She wanted me to be able to walk to the school bus and not have to worry about getting shot. Okay? That's the reality of the situation. Had nothing to do with being an uppity Negro and thinking we better than everybody else. My mother wanted me to be able to sleep safe at night. So if I, if that means that we're uppity because we, um, when I do have children, I don't want my children to be in an environment where I'm like I don't even want to go leave them to go to the grocery store because I'm afraid something might happen to them. So if that means you're uppity, then fine, we're uppity then. All right, I'll well, take that. Then. Well, I'll, I'll be know, upper D Negro. Well, you know, I've never <laughs> once felt I'm better than anybody. I, that's why I always say, even what I do, and people tell me, oh, you're doing this online. And I say, I am on a chitlin circuit because I ain't better than nobody. That's first and foremost. But, you know, it's kind of like what the old thing Janet Jackson said. She said, uh, what, how did she put that? I don't think I'm all that. You think I'm all that. You know, so I don't think I'm uppity. You think, uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't think that you think that. So it, it has nothing to do. Your perception of me is not facts. That goes for really anybody. Um, so when I say we should have some sort of standard uh, that we should not play the victim because it doesn't get you anywhere. Because like I said, I've been there in my life. It don't get you anywhere. You know what I'm saying? And who? And he said talking about a job, house, or whatever. Nobody know how I live because I don't really say how I live. You know what I'm saying? And it has no bearing on my the message that I'm speaking. But I'm talking about what really works um, in life. And playing the victim does not work. It doesn't get you anywhere. And, you know, the bad thing is when you play the victim long enough and you realize that, man, I wasted all this time in my life with doing this crap. I could have been doing something productive. You know what I'm saying? Instead of focusing on the wrong thing. And I tell people, yeah, they want to tell you use racism and discrimination. The thing is, if somebody's racist towards you or discriminate towards you, go somewhere where they like you. Because not everybody hates you. That's just first and foremost. I mean, we, we just, I just don't like that too much. People blaming everything um, on victimization or you're an uppity Negro for telling other black people to stop it and stop focusing on progress. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, that just amazes me. Let me see. You're a coon. When you say, uh, whitey isn't making the thugs shoot. And then you're uppity. If you say you are not 
you know, well, let me see. You can't use racism to victimize yourself and not progress. So you like you can't win for losing. I mean, it's all, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's sad because the only thing some black people want to hear is you talk about racist police, and it goes back to racism, or you a victim of slavery, you a victim of the, well, I'm sorry, post traumatic slave syndrome. That one in itself is just really, <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. I, I feel former slaves would be the ones that should suffer post traumatic slave syndrome or disorder. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, like, yeah, certain teachings from slavery, but it's black people's fault. Actually, why it's still inside our group, like the colorism thing. We decided to keep that going. We could have rejected colorism. Once we got off of the plantation, we could have rejected that. But, you know, unfortunately, it's like we still to this day uh, deal with colorism. And color, colorism is a real thing in our community. Why is it that we can't reject that? I mean, at the end of the day, we all black. Exactly. You can ask any black person. I mean, plenty of people have said... They've asked their white friends, you know, who's darker, him or her. They'll just be like, oh, I don't know. You, you guys all look black to me. I can't tell. So you, <laughs> and it's if, true. Even if you have black, you like you're you still know black saying? anyway. They still gonna call you black. They're not gonna say, you know, that, that's what trips me out with some black people. Well, I'm part Italian, and I'm part like, what's wrong with being black? <laughs> you you want to call yourself everything in a book, but you can't say you're black. You know, it, it's it, it just that's what I'm saying. You know, some of the problem with, with black people, unfortunately, too, is that they have an immense hatred for for black people. You know, I feel that they have some hatred for black people worse at times than the Ku Klux Klan. You get what I'm saying? Because when you hate a black man so much, or you don't view black people's lives. Uh, don't really matter much. That's why I was saying that, and some people got pissed off that black lives only matter when a white racist kill you, mm-hmm. because it don't matter when somebody steps on your Jordans and you're ready to kill them, because he steps on your tennis shoes that Nike's going to release probably. Now they're dropping new ones every month. <laughs> every month they're dropping some new shoe. So and and Nike stock, you know, like I said, make I could check that for you right now. What Nike stock is running because you know what I do have uh, for right now a share of Nike stock. I didn't, I mean I didn't get a whole bunch of them. I got like four shares of Foot Locker. Um, that way we out there fighting and buying Jordans, may help my stock go up. Um, Nike stock is actually running um, ninety six dollars and eighty two cents a share. So, you know, y'all running and giving all your money to Nike and yet Nike making all this money off of y'all. And then they, they put the shoe out. It's probably only worth like about twenty or thirty dollars. But you want to kill a black man. And then you want to say, well, there was conditioned to do that. So black people's conditioned about Jordans. And black people's conditioned. Well, they'll say, people? oh, well, it's the, it's the media that's doing it. It's the rap videos. You see, okay, well, let's just break it down. The white man put uh, certain black men on TV and tell them to wear certain jewelry and tell them to, you know, wear these clothes and these shoes so that us, you know, as a consumer, will look at that and see that, feel that we have to emulate that to feel, you know, to feel like we we're, we have something. And then because. Us regular people don't have that kind of income. Now we have to commit crimes so that we can afford those types of clothes. And that's all conditioning due to white people. It has nothing to do with you should learn how to validate yourself without having to have the latest of everything. I don't have the latest of everything. I repeat, please, I wear the same clothes all the time. Probably the same, like, couple pairs of pants in the same outfits. If I'm going somewhere important, yeah, I'll dress nice. But for Monday through Friday, there's no, there's no purpose. It doesn't matter. Yes. You know, and that, but, you know, I mean, there's some people in our community who will sit there and try to make me feel bad about it because I don't want, I don't feel, I don't see the need to impress other people because I know that I'm validated. You know, I think that I look, I think I'm beautiful within myself. I don't need the outside world to validate me. But a lot of people do, unfortunately. Yeah, you don't. You don't. 
You know what I'm saying? And, and, and they make so many bad moves financially like me. All the time you see me out really shopping, it's, I mean, like, when it's time to go somewhere. Like, oh, like me and my wife about to go somewhere and say, oh, shoot. Like, last time I really went and bought some, like, an outfit was um, Valentine's. And mm-hmm. then I caught, a sale, I caught sales at Macy's. Uh, but it was, it was some good brands, don't get me wrong, but I caught sales on the stuff. And, and that's that's what that's what we try to do if if we can, or whatever. It, it, you know, we not always in it's like a man. I'm like this. I got my kids. I'm trying. I got math tutoring to pay for. I have all my expenses in my home. Yes, I got child support to pay for. I have everything I'm trying to pay for. So you know, then I, like my kids, like right now, all my kids need to go on a shopping spree right now. So I'm like, oh God, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I say, my 15 year old. It's like buying for another woman in the house, literally. You know what I'm saying? Because them clothes, you know, she's real tall and everything. So that's something that we have to do. And then our other daughter, she needs clothes. I mean, it's just so you don't really be spending that kind of money and stuff on your kids um, when you go through life. Now, when it comes to your kids, especially young ladies, you know how, you know, y'all, you know, there's a lady, y'all clothes and undergarments and all that stuff costs a lot of money more than it costs for us as men oh yes they and, do <laughs> and, and so you know we have that times at least for now three you know my little daughter she just you know seven months so you know i ain't got to worry about that with her for a long time but you can't you know now what if i was constantly victimizing myself and say you know I can't be successful because I'm black. I can't be successful because I'm a dark skinned black male or whatever other reasons that some people use to not do anything. You know what I'm saying? Then I couldn't be in a position to try to even take care of my family. Cause see, it's about, you know, surviving too. I mean, don't you, don't you want to live right? I mean, a lot of people don't even go on vacation, you know, at all. Uh-huh. Don't go on vacation. And I'm not saying you got to go somewhere like and just, you know, I don't know why some people think a vacation is a place to spend or well, five or ten grand. But how are you going to do that if you victimize, you think you're a victim so much that you can't progress? Like some black people feel certain jobs. Well, that's, well you know, white people do that. What is like, man, you go where that money's at. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, I, I don't get that. I mean, like, like for instance, nursing right now. Is is a job that's even like especially around here in Houston, they giving sign on bonuses to nurses. That's becoming RNs. Like that is a hot feel right now for any. Oh yeah, it is. Can. A lot of I know a lot of girls that are doing that right now, <laughs> becoming RNs. Matter of fact, my sister in law she just passed her uh, test. You know, she's about to you know get her RN status. I mean, she was working uh, as an LVN, but now she's going to be. Are in so she she doing great you know what I'm saying and she didn't come from uh, a silver spoon in her mouth I mean like my wife's family they they was poor too a lot of kids or whatever and you know they didn't make excuses and say well you know we poor people so we you know uh, my parents didn't send us to college they paid for their own colleges you know because the parents really couldn't afford to at the time uh, they they took care of themselves and they did it you know so. We all come from a spot that we can all use for an excuse to uh, sh- for our failures. There's too many people do that by playing the victim. So uh, we got what 51 minutes left in the show. Um, yeah, 51 minutes, Miss Gabrielle. So three four seven nine nine six thirty three fifty. Make sure you press the one button if you want to get in. I I hope. Oh, I wish I knew Kids Max phone number. <laughs> I, I probably would call Kids Mac myself uh, and tell him, explain yourself, brother. Eric Cole, 405, you're on the show. Hello? Hello? Uh, hello? Yes, hello. You on the show? Can you, can you hear me, Phil? I can hear you good. Oh, hey, I wanted to talk to you about something. You want to help me? I want to talk with you. Okay, so go I, ahead. I started at the call. Oh, Hi. Hey. Before you. And I wanted to call you about something. I, had to, I wanted to ask you a few off-topic questions. Okay. Oh. Okay, ask away. Phil? 
Ask All right, we're here. We're listening. Like, mm, like, I had an opinion on that guy. You know, you know that top guy. Opinion like, on what? I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of nervous here, Phil. Kind of like a ball of nerves. Good thing I'm not made of glass. I'll let shake myself to pieces. Don't be nervous. There's no celebrities on this line. There's nothing to be nervous for. Like, I was wondering, what if instead of that innocent guy, that cop choked out, like, that cop choked out a bad person on the street while everyone watches? If what on the, let's get real, what he said. Okay, he said, you said, what if instead of an innocent man being choked out on the street, what if it was a, a bad person being choked out by a cop and everybody watched? Would that be okay, basically? Would that be okay? Well, in the sense of law enforcement, that no. wouldn't be okay because he should arrest the person. I'm saying got- if, for example, like, you know who that killer guy, John Wayne Gacy, is? Yeah, Gacy, yeah, that serial killer, yeah, what about him? Yeah, but what if that cop, instead of choking that innocent guy, choked him to death on the street, on the sidewalk, and everyone watched? What you want me to, what you want me to say about that? I don't know. Like, what he get, what he get all kinds of fancy stuff, like a dinner from the president and the mayor, and a parade. Rage, I'm pretty sure he would. I'm pretty sure. All that good stuff. No, not doing, it, not doing it that way he huh? wouldn't. Not doing uh-huh. it that way he wouldn't. That's, no matter what the person does, mm. that's still excessive. I imagine he'd force. get a lot of fancy things for killing a murderer. Mm. Uh, well, he could actually still get in trouble because... Um, I mean, I used to be a CJ major. Basically, if you were doing something like that, that is excessive use of force. Where, no matter what the person did, whether they stole something, whatever. The only time that a, a police officer can harm another person is if it was, uh, like, if the person lunged at them and attacked them first and, and the other person was defending themselves. And, I mean, if the officer was defending themselves or there was they were protecting other people from imminent danger, okay, then they are allowed to harm criminals. But as far as just choking somebody out on the street, um, no, they're not allowed to do that. And then Neither there wouldn't be any fanfare. They wouldn't do any, there's not going to be any fanfare. I don't know. I'm not psychic. <laughs> but, I mean, by the, by, the, by the law standpoint, they're still not allowed to do that. No matter, Like I said, no matter if you're a murderer, rapist, killer, whatever you... Well, I just said, you know, whatever. You know what I mean. No matter what you do, you're, the police officers are not allowed to ch- lay, choke you out like that. Mm, okay. What's your next question? Well, I'm just wondering. I seen your comment a while back, and I was, I was curious about it. I wanted to get your attention. You know, how do you know when someone's like firing you and someone's not there, someone's when someone's being actually serious? Right. Yeah, we know he's trolling now. No, I comment. <laughs> hang up on him. Seriously, I don't want to play talk anymore. All right, Miss Gabriella, Miss Gabriella, pull rank. So, <laughs> well, because he's playing now. Yeah, Erico 315, you on the show. Um, hi, it's Tim again. Hi, who, uh, what's your name? Hello? It was Kim again. She's calling Oh, back. oh, I saw your name. I saw it pop up with the one. I said, okay, I don't really remember in the numbers. It's Kim again. All right. Hello, Kim again. Yeah, I, I want to comment on that last caller. Okay. Um, It seems like whenever, like, you were talking about, like, black issues, there's, like, someone that says, well, what if this happened? <laughs> and, like, I don't understand, like, how people can... Like, they just missed the whole point of, like, what's actually being discussed. And they'll just say, well, what if this happened? Then what would you say? Like, if, it, if the team is your turn, in any situation, if it's bad, then it, you would still have the same, like, human reaction to it. So, I don't know. That just really stood out to me. No, no, so, so my but thing is, I don't, Kim, I just really don't have that kind of time to sit up, like, and wait on somebody's radio show and call in acting like a child. I just don't have that kind of time. Cause I'm like, that's not 
productive to nothing I got going on. I mean, I got like I say, shoot, I'm not busy doing this. My little girl, she she uh, be looking for my attention. She want to beat me up half the time because I don't know why I've, I I have Iron Mike because my little girl likes to swing. I don't know why she likes to swing, and she thinks it's so funny. I'm serious with Gabriella when she was three months old. Uh, I was uh, in a, laying there like looking at her, and you know, you know how you have your babies on the bed, and she's just looking. And one day I'm in her face, I say, "Oh, playing with her." She hit me, and I say, and I say, I laugh, and she hit me, and she laughed at three months old, and ever since then it's been on. So now she just she swings, and if the moment you can say "ow" to her, she's like she just have a big smile on her face. I say, "Why you like to fight so much?" I say, "That's good. You like to fight, though, in a way." I say, "The fight is in you." So you you know what I'm saying? I, say, I guess you get that honest. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, you yeah. know you know. But like I say, people, you know that's part of the internet. You know you're gonna deal with that. You know, and I just like say if I if I realize that's what you're doing, and for, I because mean, I when people call, I don't be looking at them as they're trolling. Uh, I'm just trying to listen to what they're trying to say, and that's why sometimes I have a hard time hearing them. That's why I say, "Miss Gabriel, you heard what they said." Because sometimes it doesn't make out right what they're saying across the thing. But it, when I'm on uh, YouTube, I hear it perfectly. Um, but I don't know. Like I'm a grown man, I ain't got that kind of time. You know what I'm I could not see it honestly. Though. Like you said, I can't sit there for how long has it been? Like two hours sitting there waiting on the line for <laughs> for two hours just so you can sit there and troll. Or like that other person, the first caller, they were sitting there like before the show even started. They were on there. Actually, they were. Wait, they, they weren't. Were. They were. No, and then check okay. and check this out. And then when I post it to YouTube, they they'll be in the comment section. I trolled. That was me calling at this timestamp. I'm like. <laughs> Oh my God! Like really? <laughs> Your life must be like, pretty boring. Yeah, you and really that, suck. That's all you got to look forward to. Is it's, like, it's like man, though. it's like get you a female or something. Like what's wrong with you? Mm-hmm. And you notice, and you think about it. Most of the patrols I've ever dealt with, it's been guys. You could tell they're lame. They can't get no females because a guy with a woman would not even be wasting time trying to call somebody's show to act stupid. You're like, you're like, man, I'm going to work. I'm going with my girl. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I ain't got that kind of time because I'm a grown man. So every time one of you guys trolling, you telling on yourself that you have no girlfriend. I mean, I guess your girlfriend is the bottle of Jergens. <laughs> Shit. I guess so. I mean, because that's all they got to do. Because like I said, if he had a girlfriend or some woman he fooling with, he wouldn't have time to call me. He's not, at least not on that. You gonna spend your you gonna spend your week night calling another man. <laughs> oh, that's kind of sad. It really is. Yeah, it, it is. But it's funny. But that's part of the internet, though. I guess it doesn't make it uh, boring because you have people trolling and whatever. But like I said, the topics that we talk about are important topics, and you know that they, they just they always got to do that. You know, so it's it's no big deal. Actually, Miss Gabriel, we ain't dealt with no trolls in a while, though. Mm-hmm. We haven't. Yeah, but you notice, know, it's always when we're talking about some type, just like the, uh, just like Kim said, whenever we're talking about some type of an issue in the black community, it's always we always get um, the white racist trolls calling. Mm-hmm. Always trying to throw salt in the game, trying to you know try to get us off the right path. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's true. You know what I'm saying, and uh. But doggone it, where's Kids Mac? <laughs> and then when he calls, yeah, but that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Well, like you said, um, where's Kids Mac? Oh my God, I don't see him. But yeah, that you know, like I said, they have nothing to do with themselves. You know what I'm saying? So we we just we just keep it moving and make the you know we all know racism mentally slow. We know that we have established that many times. So. We gotta do what we do, Miss Gabriella. Mm-hmm. I'm having fun yeah, though. It's not bothering me. All the time, but it seems like it's happening a lot today. You say you're having fun? No, I'm having. Well, she was saying that she she watched the show all the time, and that um, it just seems like today that they're really doing it. But I'm having fun with it. It's not hurting my feelings. Oh no, no, I have fun with it too. You know, at times I play I play along with them. You know what I'm saying? Just to have fun. I mean, why not? I mean, shoot. I mean, they, they take the time to call. But, you know, I guess if I'm not in the mood at the time to, to play with them, then I won't. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting a headache. I, I'm not in the mood to be playing right now. <laughs> but that's on, you know, 
You ain't got no. You ain't got no. Go ahead. You ain't got no Advil, Miss Gabriella. I don't. I don't feel like getting up. <laughs> Shoot. You know. You know what. You know what worked good for them headaches though. Um, that Advil liquid gels. They work good. And I. And the pharmacist told me the liquid gels work better because uh, they dissolve faster mm-hmm. than, than other pills. So yeah, if I have a headache, I take that. So, so Miss Gabriella, um, you, you so when 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 are we walking across this stage? No, uh, hopefully in May. Hopefully in May, you're gonna what you gonna you gonna have a, a party when you, when you graduate. Honestly, I just I just want to get out of there. I don't even care. <laughs> I told them I I really didn't even want to go to graduation, but my mom said after all this, you better take you better go to graduation. So I just wanted them to mail me the diploma. I really didn't care. To be honest with you, I just want to be out of school and, and move on with my life. That's just my how I felt about it. Oh, you want all that fanfare? No, I, just, no, I had enough. <laughs> I got my degree. I'm happy. That's good. Hey, once you get that degree, you know what I'm saying. And then, then you made that accomplishment. Um, you know, you're not gonna go in, in back, or you gonna just uh, focus on some other things? No, I'm, I'm not doing the school no more. Oh, okay. Um, after that, I want to just. Uh, I mean, I plan on. I mean, there's a lot of things I plan on doing. I plan on getting certified to be a trainer. Long story. I don't feel like explaining it. Um, and then I want to just keep doing what I'm doing and just eventually have my own business. No, we talking about playing the victim thing. You talking about trainer? Yeah, a lot of people believe it or not when it comes to. And this is gonna be sensitive when I'm talking about. Some people do play the victim a lot when it comes to our weight. Yes, we do. We say, I can't lose weight because of my genetics. I can't lose weight because of many reasons or whatever. And you know, like I said, when somebody asks me about like fences, they say my weight or whatever. I don't blame my wife and her great cooking. I blame myself. I said, no, at one <laughs> point in time, I was just eating too much and I did not go to the gym as I should. And that's just it. I don't blame other people. I take personal responsibility for whatever Philip does. Now, Philip has been very hard back in the paint in the gym. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I put my, got myself back on the diet eating, what, five, six times a day. So, you know, drinking, dr- making sure I'm drinking these green teas because uh, they have a lot of antioxidants and it's a natural fat burner. And I read some. um, about why I started drinking hot teas is because they had a, a thing about how Asian people, shout out to Asians, uh, <laughs> they drink hot teas when they eat their uh, foods. And they were saying that the hot tea, if it have any fat in the food, it actually makes the fat pass through instead of um, actually sticking to the you know lining of your stomach when you collect fat. Because you know, you know how they say you put some grease inside of cold water, you know how it solidifies? Well, there's some fat Asians though. Don't don't sit there and just think that you can eat no, whatever you want well, and drink no, a lot of tea well, and be good. Of course, well, there's of a course. lot of fat Asians. I've seen it. Okay, Miss Gabrielle, yes. If you eat the American diet full of fast food and processed food, anybody can gain weight, no matter what race. But we're talking no, I'm about. I'm talking about Asians in Asia. That's what I'm saying because oh, I've seen it. Oh well, yeah, I'm pretty sure. But I mean, what I'm saying, but we ta- we're talking now. about a, just a common practice within their culture. You know, because mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. at least when I was growing up, things have changed now because there's a McDonald's on every corner. Uh, you know, so like I said, some people don't want to take responsibility for that. And they want to, you know, feel and I don't know what situations with weight. You do feel bad, you know, because you're like, dog, you don't like what you see in the mirror or you may look at some old pictures you had. You may have some of the old clothes in there. And you can't really feel sorry for yourself a lot when it comes to the situation with weight. Yes, you can. I mean, and even men. Yes, men feel bad about their weight, too. Um, just Not just women. Because you think we don't want to walk around with wife beaters and look certain ways at times. I'm not saying that's a uniform we should walk in. Uh, but, you know, go to the beach or whatever. Um, you know, you want to take your shirt off or whatever. You don't want to be like feel embarrassed. So men do go through secret issues about their weight that is probably not too broadcast. Mm-hmm. But you always hear about women dealing with uh, weight issues, and you know you you can't feel sorry for yourself too. And and then sometimes that feeling sorry for yourself and uh, can make you eat more. 
Mm -hmm. I'll even say from experience, because you saw, I don't know if you saw my before and after pictures. I used to be overweight. And I'm still trying to lose weight. And it's something that you, I mean, it's a lifelong thing. Mm -hmm. It's not like you just work out and then you lose all the weight and then you don't have to ever work out again and you can eat whatever you want. It's, it's, a, um, it's something you have to deal with all, your whole life. Exactly. Um, I mean, I, I was getting to the point where I was having to, uh, I almost was going to have to take high blood pressure medicine. And I was young. Yeah, I mean, and, and, so, uh, and that's, and you know, like, I've never taken that kind of medication in my life. And then when I had gained, you know, that weight, um, you know, the doctor suggested that I go on that. And I'm like, what? And um, so the doctor said, well, if you lose the weight, I probably can just take you back off the medication. You know, sometimes you look at your blood pressure, or whatever, while, you, while you're not on the medication. And then you see where you're at. And like at one point in time, my blood pressure was like like 152, you know, over 79, 80, somewhere around there. You know, and I checked my blood pressure today and I was like 141 over 80. And that's good before I took, you know, way before I took my medication. And I do credit to some of that dropping uh, due to diet change, uh, working out, you know, getting up in the morning, you know, doing the weights, doing the... Uh, you know, I like to try to get the home stem master. You know, that's what I like the most. If I'm gonna try to, you know, lose weight, try to get on that by 25 minutes or so. Uh, you do a stem master, Miss Gabriella? No, I don't. Yeah, I try. I try to do that one because that's the one I know is I sweat the most more than that. Maybe. I mean, I do it sometimes. Never mind, scratch that. Yeah. But I mean, I do a bunch of different things. I don't. I try not to do the same thing all the time. Mm -hmm. It just. I think it depends on what your goals are and what you're trying to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of it is personal responsibility because I hate when people say, oh, it's genetics. Oh, you know, oh, everybody with my family was fat. So I got to be fat too. And oh, I don't know how to cook healthy foods. We better learn. We got the internet. We have the internet. You know what I'm saying? No, then, if we live in the then, most, probably one of the best time periods in the world. Just like you said earlier, we live in a, in a time period where you can, anything you want to know, anything mm -hmm. in the world, you can go and look it up on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I can learn how to build a rocket ship in my bedroom if I wanted to. I mean, that's the kind of time period we live in right now. So I'm not going to sit there and make excuses. And as far as weight, you eat everything that you put in your mouth. So you can't blame anybody else for, but yourself. Um, I, I mean, I can understand if you were a child and, you're, and you may have some issues with your weight because your parents don't cook healthy foods or something like that. But even then, you can still exercise. What's stopping you from doing push-ups and sit-ups and stuff? Well, the hardest thing about exercise, I'll tell you about it, is if you can do it consistently at least two weeks, at least two, you can get in that routine. It's like that first week is so hard with it, especially when you change a diet like that and try to start eating right. Because, um, like, your boy, your body be craving, you be craving that sugar, craving all the more Please. bad. I don't even do that. I don't even do that. I eat what I want. Um, I, w I mean, if you, yeah, it how depends much, on who but you how are. Much I mean, it? I... I did it gradually, though, because what happened, because if you try to do a crash diet, like you try to completely do a 100 percent overhaul of your diet right Cold away, turkey. it's going to be hard for you to fall. You're going to fall off. Well, you know, I don't know. I guess I've always been the type of person like I can't gradually do anything because I do nothing. So I either I have to go uh, all in cold turkey or eat all the bad foods. So, mm. so like for me, you know, I say, well, I don't really have a taste of sweets right now. Thank God I don't. So, you know, like I say today, my wife had made some, uh, this thing they call like a, a chicken chili. It's like a broth and it has, uh, you know, rotisserie chicken in it, uh, white beans, uh, it's just a bunch of different vegetables in it. You know, I had like a bowl of that, uh, which is real good and also gets you your protein for the day. You know, just like we have small bowls, so that's good for portion control. Uh, but, you know, for a lot of it with me too, it's not just my health, but shoot, I look at my... I look at the same guy you guys look at on this camera. Sometimes I'm like, my God, I really need to trim down. I say, I'm sorry. I, I'm more critical of myself than anybody. I'm like, I look at my video and say, why did I do it that way? Why did I say it that way? And it could look better this way. And then if the light was that way, I'm highly, I guess what you want to call perfectionist about things. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. You go through that, Miss Gabrielle, and you do your videos? No, oh, I do all the time. I don't even like looking at my own videos after I put them up. Cause I don't like looking at myself. I don't know why. I don't know why. Cause when you, when you, because people that don't make videos wouldn't understand. But 
after you, if you go back and you look at the video, you're sitting there thinking, why do I, like, you just be, you be breaking little things apart, like, why do I sound like that? I use the word like too much, I use this word too much, oh, I, I wish I didn't make that sound, or you'll just be sitting there, like, breaking yourself apart, so I just try not to even do it at all, but, I mean, I may watch it later, just during the editing process, but after that, after I post it up, that's it, I don't, I really, it's rare that I go back and look at it after that. Yeah, you know, it's like for a long time, it took me a minute just to even hear my own voice across YouTube because I was like, my God, I sound country. I mean, I like, oh, my God. I mean, my voice is high pitched, squeaky and annoying, but I just, (laughs) but some people seem to enjoy it. So you just, it don't bother me because what you don't like, somebody else will. Yeah, it's like sometimes somebody asks me, say, what you do? And I tell them then. Then I, I kind of show them, but uh, videos is here and there. But I don't want to show them like 15 seconds of it, something like that, because I just don't want to hear. Because like you got somebody watching mm-hmm. you do that, and then you know you're standing mm-hmm. there with them. It's like you get kind of, at least for me, that's how I get kind of like, all right, all right, you know, check it out in your own time. Cause I just don't want to hear myself. Yeah, I, mean, I do that too. Yeah, that I understand. <laughs> I'm like that too. I don't like to hear my own. I don't like to hear my own voice, especially when other people are watching it. Like, a lot of my family members, like, some of them have, they know about my YouTube channel and stuff, but I don't want them to watch it in front of me. You know, it's like, just don't. <laughs> I will feel uncomfortable and embarrassed. I, I know, I know, it feels, it feels weird. It's not, it's not a secret. I'm not trying to hide nothing. I'm not doing anything. I'm not posting twerk videos or nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not like I'm embarrassed. But, you know, I just don't like to hear, but I don't like other I don't know. I don't want to sit there and have my phone out and have you watching my video. I don't know. I wouldn't feel comfortable with that. Yeah, I I know. I, I hear you. Um, I, I feel the same exact way that you do. Now, um, I think come. I think Friday. So, well, Friday and then the Friday after that. I don't know if anybody has seen uh, the video me and uh, Steve Williams posted the uh, maybe last Friday or so. Um, well, we're going to have two more videos coming. Well, but I'm going to only post them on Friday just to see how that work. If, if y'all like a series that me and him, uh, doing videos together, um, as I, as I stated before, you know, the brothers, you know, from around here. So I'm trying to support other brothers and, uh, I think he's a, you know, he's a good fit. You know what I'm saying? Not, not saying he's trying to join what we got going on, but it just, I, I think we compliment very well. You know, I mean, did you watch the video with Gabriel, the one I'm talking about? Uh, I haven't gotten a chance to. Okay. Well, the people have, I got, you know, like I told him, I'll put the video up and I'll look at the comments. That's how I do everything. And if it's more people that say they want to see more of that, then I'll, we'll see about doing it again. If not, then I say, well, look, that just didn't, you know, because like I said, I scrapped other video series before. Um, I remember I was trying to do a video series called uh, Ask the Advice Show. I remember that. And the purpose mm-hmm. of that was to send me questions, I respond to them. Well, that just didn't work out too well. I mean, I didn't get the questions like I thought I would get, and I just threw that away. Mm-hmm. I mean, I try all kind of new stuff for you guys. Um, if I get time, because, you know, it's like I got so much going on, it's like I try to make sure to get enough news reports out. But then I got the Ratchet Video Weekly channel, and I got to make sure to get those videos out because if I don't put them out within a timely manner, then I get a bunch of emails and Facebook messages telling me, what happened to Ratchet Video Weekly? I look forward to it. And this and that and the third. So, you know, I, and I, I like, I get so much more, I guess, positivity from that channel. That's why I enjoy it so much. And to mm-hmm. say that, you know, is only posted once a week is doing good. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's doing real good. Um, I can't complain about that channel at all. You know, I'm thinking that the way things going this year, Ms. Gabriella, we may get to 100,000 subscribers on that one this year. I'm thinking that the route is taking. You know, for a channel, oh, let's hope so. Well, hey, for a channel that I use once a week, that's not bad. Mm-hmm. It's not bad at all. Uh, I, actually, today I was... Um, on a computer and I found videos for Ratchet Video Weekly, so that's great for me. Um a few of y'all has hit me up on Instagram, uh sent me some uh pictures. Uh some of y'all emailed me pictures, so um I'll try to definitely incorporate that this week. 
into the uh, videos. But I guess, I guess Kids Mac not gonna call here tonight. I, I guess not. I, I was I was hoping he was gonna call, uh, so I, so I could talk to him about that comment. But you know, it's crazy. You know, I do that disrespectful comment uh, video, and I get so many comments. You know, people talking crap and everything else, but yet yeah, nobody uh, wants to call. Uh, what is he talking about? Nobody want to call and go off on me on, on this dog on um, radio show. I never understand of that. Of course not. Of course not. Because it's easy to hide behind a computer screen. I can get on a computer. I mean, I can sit on YouTube and make a fake profile without my na- my without my real picture or my real name on there. And I can say whatever I want to say. And really, you couldn't say anything to me. Because, I mean... I mean, you don't even know what I look like. You don't know who I am. And so people like to hide behind that anonymity. And they can say whatever they want, whenever they want, however they want. But when it comes time to, hey, here's our show. You can call our show and speak to us directly. Nobody has ever taken us up on that. Well, I mean, a few people have, but it's, it's yeah, few and yeah. far between. Yeah. Yeah, you would think, much as they talk crap, you know, you would think, oh, man, I'm calling him. You know what I'm saying? No, but that would be, that, that would be scary, though. If you were... If you were so comfortable with being a troll, because being a troll is easy. Yeah, I mean, you can like, hide, I mean, that would be it's easy, and for some people, it's fun. Yeah, yeah, some people love to troll. That's, I mean, that's what they say that's their job is to troll. To troll people, piss people off, make people feel sorry for themselves. I mean, people troll to the point that's why I call it cyberbullying. That people feel so bad that they want to kill themselves and all this other stuff. You get what I'm saying? I just ignore it. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's what I you know do. what the funny thing is, especially when you delete it. Like I don't, I don't delete a lot of comments, but when somebody goes through writing a whole paragraph, or they or they write like a five paragraph essay about what they think about me and how horrible I am, and you delete that, do you know how much that'll get under their skin? Oh yeah, yeah, that that, that definitely gets under their skin. They can't, they can't stand that. Oh, they can't stand that. Why did you? Delete my comment. Well, see, I if, if I'm at a point going to remove a comment, I'm going to block you. I don't just remove a comment. I just want to get rid of you because we we not we not going we not going to play that game. We just not going to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, I tell people all the time, you can disagree with me, and that's fine, but you're going to be an adult about it. I just bottom line, you're going to be an adult because uh, mm-hmm. adults know how to convey their disagreement. And they don't have to insult you, talk about you person, talk about your family, or anything like that. You know, I guess I guess uh, the trolls play the victim when you block them. <laughs> like, why could why did you block me? Are you scared? It's not. It's not that I'm scared. I just don't want. I don't want the trouble that comes with trolls. I mean, I don't really look at my comment section. I mean, sometimes other people will point it out to me, but for the most part, I don't really pay attention to it. Probably after like the first or second day, but I don't really. If, if something is really creating a problem, if I'm looking at my comment section and my if I, my notifications are blowing up because people are arguing about the issues in Palestine and my video had nothing to do with that, then I might just go ahead and delete and block it because I don't really have time for all that. Yeah, I had one person tell me, "Why don't you make a video about this? Why don't you make a video about that?" And I'm like, "Uh." Why are you like? I mean, it, it like kind of having an attitude about why I'm not making a certain video. Well, you got it. Okay, you have a you you put a comment on this video using your own YouTube channel. <laughs> so why don't you take exactly. your own YouTube channel? And if you have an issue with something, you make your own videos. Well, my platform isn't as big as yours. Okay, well, do you think that your platform is wasn't this, that the size that it is is now overnight? It took some time. It took a couple years to build. So. Okay. Just take. I mean, understand that. And then my and my thing is, are you going? Are you going to help a brother out? Like like when he say he's trying to do it. Like you show me you trying to help me out. You know when I say I got some crowdfunding or something going on. Then 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 if you know I'm kind of like like a politician. If you want the people that donated and you asked me to do a video, I'd probably be more inclined to do it because I say wait a minute, they actually believe what we got going on. So if they asked me to do a news story. And it's something kind of important to them. I may be more inclined to do it because you actually trying to further what we got going on. Uh, let me see here. This person just pressed one. I guess we got twenty minutes left. Air code eight three two seven three eight. You on the show? Hello. 
Yes. Hello, you on the show? Hey, how you doing, Phil? This uh, this is uh, my name is Reginald, and uh, I just want to say uh, it's great to have uh, a guy from Houston, Texas, you know, uh, telling the truth out there. Oh, there's it's plenty of us out here. I'm just I'm just one I'm just one needle in the haystack. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you know uh, this topic here that you guys are talking about. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you have a lot of. Uh, you know, veterans coming back from Iraq and, mm-hmm. you know, the, these guys, you know, some of them have, you know, they they have missing limbs, you know, they have mental problems and, and, you know, they, some of these guys are still out there working, you know, mm-hmm. you know, and providing for the families. And, uh, and, uh, you know, when I see that, you know, I'm like, how, there's no excuse, you know, there's no excuses for, uh, not being able to, you know, take control of our lives and, and make something happen. But, uh, you know, I want to ask you a question about, you know, don't you think that people who play the victim, you know, that, that that's maybe a product of their environment or, you know, maybe it's just a way of thinking, well, you know, because that way of thinking can be passed down, you know, I, well, I think about you, know. you can learn like to live in a perpetual victim state if you're taught that by pe- you know the people you're around, like say your parents or your mom or whoever. If they're a victim, then they're going to teach you to be a victim, and that's where usually the when they talk about conditioning comes from, it comes from within the household. It doesn't come from society. Because let's be real, most of us don't experience the the most horrible things in life. We spend some things. Don't get me wrong. Like when people talk about uh, when they kept using the, the the racism thing, most of us has never experienced the racism of the past. That's just true. We we had people may not like us because of the different color of our skin. And like I said, I even tell people, even believe it or not, white people go through that. People don't like them for the color of their skin either, um, because the fact that due to the, the past or whatever. I mean, everybody goes through that, you know, in society. Um, but we can't just sit there and blame, uh, other people for why we're not making it. That's just why I was saying about playing a victim. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's true. And, um, you know, actually I was just looking up at, the, uh, you, you talk about black wall street, mm-hmm. uh, in one of your videos. And, uh, you know, I was, I was shocked to even know that that was, that that would actually, that event actually happened. You know, and I, you know, you see these guys, you know, they were, they're that group of people, they, you know, they're facing so much, you know, adversity in their lives and they're still able to, you know, come up and make it. And, you know, nowadays we have, you know, no excuse on why we can't succeed. And, you know, I hate, I really hate the people, you know, see people always trying to, you know, get a, try to, you know, get a handout, get something for free, you know, and while you have people who, you know, are facing, you know, so much problems in their lives, you know, they have cancer and, you know, and they're still working, you know, trying to make it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> all right, bro. Well, definitely appreciate you calling in. All right. right. Thanks for having me. Uh, Thank you. All right, Miss Gabriella. We got about, what, 16 minutes left on the live stream of the show. Um, Like I said before, we talking about that. If you have not donated to the crowdfunding, please donate. Um, We're trying to, like I said, purchase a different camera. Uh, We were 32% funded, so we're trying to make sure we hit that goal uh, by March 25th. Um, after the show, once I, uh, go visit the little boy's room, um, <laughs> I'll, uh, try to get the videos out for today, the news stories or whatever. Um, you know, I, I work, I work very hard to try to do that for you guys, you know, and, um, finding these stories and taking up the time. Now I'm trying to 
get my partner here to eventually join that crowd. And I'm talking about you, Miss Gabriel. Join what crowd? My, the crowd of living in the studio. <laughs> I mean, I wish I could have my own studio. You can. How? If you click your heels together three times. All right, well, sure. Uh, I'll click. <laughs> and I'm going to ask my favorite godmother, whoever else, <laughs> to, <laughs> to help me get some equipment. Shoot. Sure. Like, you know. It'll it'll come in time. I'm just gonna. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? Believe it. That depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, if you're just trying to do like a simple setup, I mean, it's not gonna cost you as much unless you're trying to go, you know, all elaborate and and you know what I'm saying. I mean, it depends uh, on we'll your see. setup. It just depends on what happens and depends on you know how much time I have and all that kind. Of, I mean, a lot of things will play into it because I mean, I, I do want. To, I still I love doing YouTube videos, but then I still have other things that I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, career wise um, I mean I've been getting into modeling now and I mean I've been doing a lot of stuff outside of the internet because I don't want to I don't want to just be just online all the time I want to actually get out and do things so I am trying to build my brands you know online and offline you know but like I said in, in, like you know what 50 Cent said there's a truth you know if you're not on social media you ain't doing nothing you know it, it's, it's everything has to integrate into that unfortunately mm -hmm. Because um, I was listening to uh, you know Jamie Foxx and him talk about that on Foxhole the other day uh, on XM on Channel ninety six I think, and you know he was talking about how you can't get away with nothing no more because of social media, you know even though it's a great help but it's like people will remember everything you do, you know mm -hmm. if you have like you say a wardrobe malfunction, uh, your kids did something in the restaurant say no matter what it is people take a picture and never forget it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that I would have an issue with. It's like I wouldn't care because I think about that sometimes. What if something happens and then I'm really recognizable all of a sudden? You know what I'm saying? Like some, you know, some of these people from YouTube, they're really recognizable. Like, how would I deal with that? Because like, I don't care if somebody say recognize me, but I don't like people recognizing me out. You know, and I'm with my kids or with my whole family. Yeah, I'm kind of like. Well, I mean, it's, it's bound to happen. Yeah, it's bound to happen. I, I know it's bound to happen. Well, You're just gonna well, have to take it. In, well, it did happen. What well, I'm saying, it. bound to happen. It did happen before. But I'm just saying that you know, it just. I always say I, that's why I guess I try to, uh, even though I say a whole lot of stuff, I still try to be respectful as possible because for the fact that you know, you never know, you're out here and you don't want to stir up the crazies at times, but you still want to tell the truth. But it's just the way you do it, you deliver it. Yeah, it's whatever. not what you say, it's about how you say it. And, you mm -hmm. know, it, it, a lot of things play into that. I mean, there's always going to be somebody who disagrees with your opinion. Oh, of course. But if you, but it just depends on how you word things. Like, if you sit sitting there and you constantly just trying to say stuff for shock value, are you always trying to create a lot of controversy just so you can get views? That kind of stuff will blow right up in your face. Like, yeah, you get a lot of attention for a little while, but then you start, once you step on too many people's toes, then you create a lot of problems for yourself. Mm-hmm. Don't we know that? Let me see something real quick while we got 12 minutes. Air code 44, you on the show. Hey, hello. Yeah, what's going on? How you doing? It's Brad. Um, who were y'all talking about tonight? I just listened in. Uh, well, at the beginning, uh, well, most of we was talking about playing the victim. Uh, why it's counterproductive to uh, progress? Oh, okay. Well, I'll take one of those. Is like everybody is responsible for their own. I'm going to take a page out of Oprah's book. I don't really do this, but she was right when she said, you're responsible for your own life. Nobody can expect anybody to give you anything or take care of you. You're responsible for mm -hmm. your own life and your own stuff. But you got a lot of people who play the victims and suck them to hand them stuff, give them free stuff, and, you know, pat them on the back and feel sorry for them. Doesn't work. I've tried that. It doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. I mean... I mean, at the end of the day, you grown. You got, you got to fend for yourself. Ain't nobody going to worry about you out here like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know... Some people they grown, but they haven't grown up yet. That's they that's grown true too. in age, but yeah, has matured and has matured. Yeah, sometimes I wish people's maturity level would grow with their body, but it obviously it doesn't happen that way. 
You know, worst thing I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, I was the one that. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, I was the one that Facebook Juice said I was going to do a response video on one of your last videos that you did like a few days ago. I hadn't really got to that yet. So. On what video? Um, leaving from behind. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Well, like I said, it's, 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 it was a combination video, so uh, I don't know. Would, would you? Uh, well, like I was saying earlier, we got like two uh, more videos coming, me and Steve, so it, it will be coming okay. probably shortly. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to make that statement and that comment. That's all. So, all right, bro. Thanks for your time. All right, thank you. All right. All right, Miss Gabriella, uh, you want to say anything before we wrap it up? I don't really have anything important to say. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I usually will have something, but not today. Well, yeah, I mean, say check she... me out on YouTube and all that, and the links will be played after the show. You know, we haven't even played them. You know, we haven't played that junk in in a minute. We ha- actually haven't done that. Now I think about it, because every time we we always going toward the end, talking, you know, and uh, so we just a lot of times I said, man, ain't got time to play that, so I don't even play it. But anyway, um, like I said, after the show, as I stated earlier, I put the videos up. Um, like I say, support support what we got going on if you can support the brother, and support the sister. Um, with time, I say this is something that I discussed with Miss Gabriella. I do want to add someone else to the radio show. Um, but I, I'll explain what that's about. And, um, I know some of you probably gonna, I don't know if they're going to have some sort of way about that. I don't know. Ms. Gabriel, Cause I, I stated that I want the show to grow into, uh, kind of having everybody on the show, like everybody, di- different, you know, groups and having their opinions. Uh, because you know, like Ms. Gabriel may see things one way as a, as a lady. I may see one thing as a man. Um, you know, but we both African-American and we view things prior from that point of view, but other groups may view things, other points of view. And sometimes it's good to bring, uh, a discussion where everybody's involved. You know, at least that's what I want to do at the end of the day. Um, yeah, I think that's a good idea at least. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be nice to have something from everybody else's perspective because we don't all see things the same way. Um, I really wish that we would have somebody who will be willing to come on every week. Well, you know, I have I haven't put it out there like that. Um, you know, like I say I, but my thing is, the moment I put it out there like that, then you know, like I said, um, you know, how it goes. You, eventually, they join the show, then they actually join the team and all that other stuff. So, um, I got to figure out a process, Ms. Gabrielle, on how we will do that. Um, you know, do we want? We have auditions. <laughs> we have a lady. <laughs> we can get a lady. Get a guy. I don't know, or just the best one out the bunch. You know, we're just trying to figure that out. But you know, like I just put it up front. I would like to, you know, get a white person uh, on board, a Hispanic person also, if I can, an Asian person, um, an Arab person, if I can. Eventually, that's what I want to do. I want to mm-hmm. add because that way I can get everybody's perspective but of course that person has to you know kind of agree with the core message i'm not saying agree with just what i say but just the core message that we have going on because you can't have someone anti your core message i mean it's just not going to work you know it's like you don't see uh, msnbc putting on a bill o'reilly on their channel you know somebody that's real opposite of them you know so Mm -hmm. But everybody have differences of opinions, of course. So I'm, I'm probably going to put that out there, probably on Facebook. Uh, or so just type it and let's kind of see what kind of response we get. And me and Ms. Gabriella come up with the ways that we can do that. And also I announced it probably in a YouTube video as well. I'm pretty, and I know when I announced that to some of you, I, you probably say I'm cooning for doing that too. But forget y'all because that's well, for I, wanting to have more than one perspective. Okay, we'll be coons then. Yeah, you I'll know, take we'll, that we'll, too. we'll be coons. You know how that goes. So um, we all about growth and progress 
And one thing we're not, we don't hate nobody, even though we talk about issues in the community. And also it would open us up to talk about issues in other people's communities, which I have no issue talking about that. And a lot of issues in other people's communities, uh, <laughs> are the same. Hey, you know, you know, that's pretty good. Cause, uh, my wife was volunteering. I said, that's pretty good. I well, said, she could do it. Yeah, she could. <laughs> yeah, she was volunteering. Yeah, she sure could. You know, but shoot, she volunteered. I mean, I'm about to buy her a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. I got enough XLR ports here uh, to talk about different things. So, you know, I got, what, six more ports. So I'm good. No, five more, actually. So we we will look into that. And um, so just make sure you look at that. It's coming shortly. So uh, we're going to go ahead and head on out. And uh, we'll probably see you guys next week. Check out the YouTube channels. Uh, if you can, donate to the uh, crowdfunding uh, to help us out, get that new piece of equipment. We definitely we appreciate that. We're trying to spread the message more and more and more. If you can help us do that because nobody can do things alone. Everybody's had help some sort of way. So see you guys next time. Thank you for using Blog Talk Radio. Goodbye.